Greetings, fellow travelers. Welcome to Hell. And welcome to the Broken Pact. What was once the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica show here on twitch.tv slash dnd, now Strangers in a Strange Land here in Avernus. Coming to you via the official Dungeons and Dragons Twitch and YouTube channels, and presented by and available as a podcast, thanks to Saving Throw Show and SavingThrowShow.com. My name is Ruben Bressler. You can find me everywhere at Mox Ruby. And these fine citizens of Ravnica, or now the first layer of hell, are my players. Feel free to introduce yourselves. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan, and I play Astarok who is a Minotaur fighter from the Boros Legion, because I have this here. Although now he's also part of the... the eighth Remnant. The Eighth Remnant. <laughs> Although I, uh, we, we actually have made an adjusted Boros yes. uh, signet, which is going to be sweet. But I, I also have a contract. I, I also gave, I gave him his contract. I have a contract for you. Ooh. It's with a lesser devil. Sure. Not, not, a, not a, a huge whatever Tybalt is devil, so but I have one for you at home. Hey, and crayon and it makes sense you don't have it yet because you wouldn't have gotten it in the two minutes. Since yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> I, I, yeah, real Astrock just like draped a chain over his shoulder. He's like, nah, I'll fix it later. Perfect. Um, <laughs> drape the but chain. I, I am gonna have one. I just my printer was out of ink, so I couldn't print out a new signet to put Perfect. here. Hey everybody, I'm Rally Silverman, and I bet you're wondering, did Rally ram her elbow into the side of this thing? <laughs> oh, like, go? oh, she oh, sure did. Oh, she oh, sure oh. did. Um, she sure hit her funny bone. And I play Velma Sweet, the half-dev Karin bard slash warlock, who was a member of the Demir Guild, and we'll see if that still holds up when she gets back to Ravnica. If she gets back to Ravnica, we don't know. Bold of you to assume. Yeah. I said if. <laughs> uh, hey everyone, my name's Grav Gladi, and I play Lucian Landrian, a member of the Azoria Senate from Ravnica, and I was, uh, Lucian was recently handed a contract by Velma, uh, originally from Tybalt, and I am uh, literally reading over a paper copy that is a written legalese contract now. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hi, I'm Ryan Omega, and I am playing a character named Visayan Quarks. Visayan Quarks! Visayan Quarks! Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. A tiefling who I am excited for you to meet. And we will bring you in at a dramatically appropriate moment. Um, we are short. One, two, 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 two. Uh, Ashlyn, um, we send our love and support uh, at this time while she is off for the week. Um, we also have some sponsors to thank. Um, CoolStuffInc.com uh, brings us all of our guests this season, such as Ryan, as well as our later guest later this season, which will be announcing very soon. You can use the code BROKEN5 at checkout for your orders to receive 5% off of your orders. So use the code BROKEN5 for your Dungeons & Dragons products, board games, Magic the Gathering supplies, and more at CoolStuffInc.com where you can get cool stuff in stock every day. Is that the number five or is that the five number five? The number five. B-R-O-K-E-N and the numeral five. Good, good, good question. Mm. Uh, NorseFoundry.com is the official dice sponsor of Saving Throw Show. If you use the code Saving Throw Show, all one word, Saving Throw Show, you can get 10% off of your orders at NorseFoundry.com. We're also supported by the Elderwood Academy, makers of fine hex chests, dice vaults, and gaming supplies. You can visit them at ElderwoodAcademy.com. And we have a new sponsor this evening, everybody. Yay! Yay. Hero Forge <gasps> is going to be sending us yeah. new minis very, very soon. Yay. And they are a new official sponsor. You can go to HeroForge.com and design your own minis mm -hmm. using new creature sets such as minotaurs and loxodons. On the we website. have those. We have those in our party. <laughs> Very exciting. So go to heroforge.com and centaurs check centaurs now too for your home game. That's they a do. Brand new I thing saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So uh, thank you to Heroforge and welcome to the Broken Pact. We're really excited to have you here. They're good people. Um, uh, just a quick other a couple things at the top of the show. Uh, thanks to Zach Heidi for our music, which you'll be hearing very soon, and to Garof Galati for our wonderful opening credits. Um, Jarena Linnea does our character art that you'll be seeing throughout the show in the lower right-hand quadrant there. Um, and of course, thank you to Phil DeLuca, Emma Fury, and John Wells, without whom I'd be totally lost. And our fabulous, wonderful uh, story partners helping with the show. So without any further ado, I think it's time to jump in to tonight's episode of The Broken Pact.
Welcome back, everybody. Now I'm focused on this question the chat asked about what colors our sponsors are. What colors are our sponsors? Let's uh, let's let, let's let's solve this in the Twitterverse afterwards. Sure. If you have a, if you have a suggestion room for discussion, absolutely. If you if you have a suggestion on what our sponsors' colors are, feel free to. Put them in the doobly doo. Um, all right, I'm getting like a, maybe like a blue yes. black from Elderwood Academy. <laughs> sure, sure, right? Yeah, Gear, I'll take Gear that. Forge has to be yeah. colorless artifact. Like they make those because they make colorless artifacts. Like they have to. Maybe I could see some red in there though. Anyway, you, what do you think, Riley? Uh, I like the blue black. I, I I would do them all in regards to what guilds of Ravnica. I think they would yeah, be yeah. in, and that That's would totally be colors. That would be how I would do that, it. That, that works too. Yeah. So I'm okay with with Elderwood Academy being Elderwood Academy being. Uh, Demir, that's fine. Let's keep talking about this. We don't have a guest to get to. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. I was literally asked. <laughs> what I she was, she was, she was, he was talking about me. I'm the one. No, no. I literally said, let's talk about it on Twitter, and then immediately started talking <laughs> All right. about it. Yeah. I'm ready to go. All right. That's okay. I would have said mono blue because mono blue deals with artifacts. Hey, yep. I I am am also true. Yes. Yeah. Also true. <laughs> All right. Season three, episode six, Devil's Play. The Broken Pact, after recovering at the Motel 666, had an opportunity to chat for the first time in what seems like ages. Velma disclosed her patron. The party commiserated about their current predicament, and they enacted a plan to rescue their traveling companion, Lulu the Hollyphant, a tiny celestial with memory issues, who has teamed up with the foursome in their combined quests. And after Lulu was captured by a hell wasp and taken back to the infernal beast's home, a 50 foot tall hive floating 100 feet above the surface of Avernus, the party climbed the chains tethered to the, tethered to the object and began their mission by splitting the party. Velma and Lucian <laughs> would climb up the main route through the hive while Astarok and Tutru scaled the exterior and it worked. With the humans ably distracting the hive, uh, hive's occupants, Astarok and Tuturu chopped their way into the uppermost chamber, where they saw what kept the hive aloft, ancient dead angels floating in honeycomb amber, chained to the ground that the hive was built around, and rescued the gracious Lulu. Did you just call me a human? I did. <laughs> Humanoids. The non the non monstrous How dare. Apologies. At this point I can only apologize. <laughs> that was just as much as a monster as they are. Yeah. When yeah, she wants to be fair. Oh, there you go. The event <laughs> triggered Lulu's memories on how to cast Trumpet of Blasting, which blew the roof off the joint and exploded the angels, which caused the hive to slowly begin to descend. Lucian and Velba, having been tangling with a, the large, in, uh, intelligent infernal wasps, used the fracas to escape down out of the hive. Lucian, barely alive after some stings and sword talons right to the chest, landed first, and a gliding tutru and a hanging asterok were not far behind. Unfortunately, <laughs> Velma was less lucky, and after some checks to see exactly how far she would fall... It was all of it. Yep, she, <laughs> she face-planted into the sand, alive... <laughs> But barely. <laughs> At the bottom, the party met the Eighth Remnant, a roving warband led by a chain devil named Princeps Kovic, a devil with a cause, to push the chaos of demons back into the abyss, a cause that appealed to another member of the party. Kovic and Astarok made a deal. The Eighth would support the Broken Pact in Avernus and bear the symbol of the Boros Legion, while Astarok would in turn bear the symbol of the Eighth for a period of nine years. We pick up the action on the road, following a stray hell wasp back to a long forgotten library where the insects have been harvesting material to expand their now defunct hive. The party's dune buggy-like tormentor, the Morrow, and the convoy of the Eighth see the wasp fly into a nondescript hole in the ground. And that is where we'll pick up our action. You see the hell wasp sort of just disappear into the ground. You can take uh, short rests on this drive over if you need to. Uh, I think that you all took a short rest a bit ago, but it is available to you. I'll take one just so I can get my uh, rock inspiration back. Great. Um, mark off one usage of a soul coin. Okay. Uh, for the gas used over. Uh, and you have a chance to investigate your new items, uh, attuning to different things if you so choose. And to tell the audience 
what your new object does over there. So, uh, yeah, Astaroth will spend some time uh, uh, getting figuring out what's going on with this hammer that they found in the uh, top of the hive. And uh, after a while, you find out it is a master chill mallet, which is a weapon, war hammer, very rare, rare, requires attunement. And the master chill mallet is an ancient hammer fashioned by the Grand Master Weaponsmith, followers of Therm, the god of frost giants, as a tribute to his power and bestowed upon chosen warriors for his cause. A cool mist emanates from it, and it is frigid to the touch. And while attuned, you are resistant to cold damage. You feel acclimated to cold climates and high altitudes, including elevations above 20,000 feet as described in the Dungeon Master's Guide. When you hit with this weapon while attuned to it, the target takes an additional seven, uh, or 2d6, cold damage. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, yeah. I thought you were gonna read some 7d something. I was like, what? 7d6! <laughs> right. <laughs> Everybody dies! Good God. Um, that creature's attack count as cold in addition to their, uh, uh, other damage types for the rest of the encounter for the purposes of determining immunity and resistance. A creature hit by the weapon also makes a DC 10 constitution saving throw. On a fail, the creature becomes slow as per the effects of the slow spell for the next minute and repeating this save at the end of its turn. Whoa. Yeah. So DC 10, so like kind of low, but still a chance to slow anything you hit. That's wild, yeah. So I, I think practically it would probably make more sense for this to be a two true weapon since I already have a pretty sweet magic axe. But for the purposes of this episode, sure. I think I'll use this, right? <laughs> sure. That yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. What's up? You gave me this card last week and I don't know it doesn't have anything right. on it. Uh, this is this is symbolizing you unlocking oh, okay, one cool. of the chapters of your book. Cool. Great. Oh. Yeah. Um, and also it's which, on the magic card, Colossal Hammer, which is the best. There you go. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Mallet Master for that Mallet as well. Master. And we went over uh, the the artifact of Avernus that uh, Bondo created last week, which was the Devil's Charm Breaker, which uh, Tutru has. Yeah. Nice. So there we go. Cool. Um, and that, that Mallet was inspired Metallatalk, inspired by Metallatalk, which is in the Descent into Avernus Metallatalk. book, which is a uh, legendary Warhammer that we won't be using in this campaign. No. <laughs> using this one instead. Yes. Um, so you're able to park uh, however long away you wish. Um, the Eighth Remnant begins to, looks like they begin to like unpack some of their things. Um, uh, large boxes out of the Demon Grinder. And you are welcome to uh, begin investigating if you wish. Okay. Uh, we'll probably park maybe like 30, 40 feet away. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I mean, I'll go inspect this hole. Okay. Is, uh, these wasps are pretty big, so I yes. imagine that this hole is like almost a manhole size. It is. It's much bigger. It's, it's much bigger than a manhole. So the wasps themselves are large. Okay. And so this hole in the ground is 10 feet in diameter. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, and you can go over and take a look at it. I will. Great. Um, go ahead and roll, um, this would be perception, I think. Okie dokie. I rolled a 15 plus 4, 19. Great. Uh, and you do not have dark vision, correct? I do not have dark vision. You look into the hole and you can hear that it is cavernous inside. Okay. It, it um, drops down. The bit of light that you do get is reddish and uh, nondescript, much like our backgrounds you see here. You don't know where the sun is exactly, but there is enough light pouring in that you can see <laughs> that it goes down maybe 50, 60 feet to a floor. And by a floor, I mean it's a flat floor. Okay. Um, there are scattered books and tables and other objects around mm -hmm. on the floors. You can hear the faint echo of a hell wasp, um, theoretically uh, harvesting some sort of more books to bring back to add to its hive uh, and expand the hive. What's it looking like over there, Blue? Uh, that place is full of wasps, maybe we should skip it. Uh, I'll relay that information to my companions. Um, it's, it's, there's definitely books. Mm -hmm. It does seem to be the right place. Roll a perception check. All right. Well, I can see a little better in the dark, so I will take a look and see if anything makes more clarity to me. Yes. And I, I peek down into the hole. Fifteen. 
you hear the wasp come in, as they often do, mm -hmm. um, and you're in your normal spot waiting for the, the wasps, mm -hmm. um, ready to enact whatever plan it is that you're going to, whether to let this one pass or not. You also hear a voice speaking in common from a bit uh, from up near the entrance. So you hear that. You want to peek down? Yeah. Perception. Okay. What do you want to do? Uh, I I wait and listen because like, wait, there's, there's somebody else? Yeah. Okay. That is going to be an 18. Um, with your dark vision mm -hmm. and your, well, with your dark vision. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain that? Sure. Uh, as a bonus for unlocking the look beyond the hills element of the Arthur poem last week, Ruben decided that the mechanic in, in game for that to be affected is that until I unlock the next one and decide what to do there, uh, I have double my regular vision in both light and in dark vision. So normally dark vision, mm. I think, is like I think I essentially yeah. I essentially have drow dark vision now, which makes sense. I'm half drow anyway. Right. But That's yeah, cool. so wow. now I can see 120 feet. So look dark. beyond the hills. Um, so she can has essentially 2010 vision. So okay. you can investigate things at distance, for <laughs> example. Um, you can get minute detail. You'd be able to pick up detail that you wouldn't otherwise. Mm -hmm. And in this case, extend your dark vision range. Yeah. So you're oh, able. This is. Oh. I can see rather well, actually. Yeah. And it's surprising because you haven't been able to see this <laughs> far before. Would I have noticed it kicking in when we were in the infernal machines and stuff too? Or sure. I guess you know what. Actually, if Lucian was driving, I was probably in the back, so it might not have in fact mattered yet. Sure, but, but you can yeah. certainly tell that you have uh, improved detail yeah. when you look at the gears or at the pages or the detail and okay. whatever you have. Cool. So what do I see? What do I see that Lucian couldn't see? I can convey what he saw. What do I see on top of that? Sure. You see uh, an expansive library. You see many more stacks of books. You actually see the wasp okay. has flown down and landed on what appears to be just sort of like a pile of books okay. um, that are from knocked over bookshelves that have been sort of gathered together. Okay. Around the area you also see pretty much just a maze of these stacks. Um, there are uh, ancient um, mosaics on the ceiling that you can see um, as you uh, it, on, on sort of like the curved walls that you can see. Images of a paradise, green and lush plants and, and rivers, colors that you haven't seen in a really long time, but they're dust covered and sandy. You also it's see- like the Slethian Conclave down there. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Not, you, that's the mosaic is that, right? That's yes, the mosaic yeah. is that. I, like, I'm conveying all this to y'all as, as I'm seeing it. Great. Mm -hmm. right. Are you hiding? Uh, no. Okay. He is looking at the hell wasp um, anticipatingly. Yes. Because uh, this is not the first time, and uh, but he knows that there's other people, so it's like, I don't know if I want to get them into trouble. Right. So let me wait, see if they come in or go away, and then I'll do something. Sure. Uh, but you're not planning on trying to capture or kill this one? Maybe not if they can go away. Sure. Okay. But if other people kill it, that'd be great. Great. But you're not hiding. No. So I, do I see him? Right. Roll okay. stealth. All right. Even though you're not trying. Yeah. Still want to know. Okay. Uh, Wait, 12. Gonna I'm going to see you. 12. Well, I rolled an 18. You so rolled an 18. Does that yeah. effect? Because that's also 18 in dark vision. So. so I'm seeing, I'm only seeing black and white for most of it. Um... You see uh, an image of so, uh, some other movement, okay. but it doesn't draw your attention. Okay. Um, it could just be dust moving around. Uh, you actually see two figures okay. moving like that. Um, and the wasp, or the wasp is one of those two figures? There's a wasp, and then there are two figures. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, coming up behind you, mm -hmm. sort of like he normally does, sort mm -hmm. of jauntily coming up, is Dewey. Ah! Hey, hey, what's going on? Oh! We have uh, visitors? Is we, this another wasp? Are yeah, we, gonna... we, we might have visitors. Great. That, that, that'd be great. Uh, uh, I think I should do something about this if you want visitors. Unless uh, you want to help. I, I, I mean, I can, I, I don't really want to help, but I can, you know, I always do. <laughs> oh, oh, I know, you're very, very useful. Uh, I have an idea. Uh, uh -huh, maybe uh -huh. it, I can distract it. Okay, cool. Okay. Can I, how should, okay, how, what are you gonna do? Uh, 
well. Uh, I know enough about hell wasps to to know uh, their mating rituals. Mm. So I think I'm going to make an illusion of. Let me see. Can I tell what gender this one is? Make an animal handling. All chair. right. Does anyone else want to do anything at this Can point? Can I hear this conversation? Can I make it out from how far away I am? I would say yes. Okay. You're, if you're not trying to hide. I'm not trying to hide. Yes. Yeah, I didn't know if I was too far away to hear to make no, it out. No, you can hear that. Okay. Especially Astro kept so his I'm, distance from I'm, the wall there as they're scouting it out. I'm, can, I'm repeating back to them what I'm hearing being said down right. there. Yeah. And with your 15, actually, what language are you speaking in? I'm, I am speaking in... I'm assuming I'm speaking to him like normally, so it's okay. probably going to be something like Infernal. Okay. Speaking in Infernal. I can understand Infernal. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. You hear that. You okay. hear humanoids talking downstairs, but you don't speak Infernal, so you don't understand. So I'm conveying to you what I'm hearing. Okay. And it might be strange that I'm speaking, that I'm understanding Infernal. Well, you don't know, maybe you don't know what Infernal is when you first hear well, it. Well, if I'm like, I'm just like, what is this language? And then you translate it, I'm like, why do you know this language from a place we've never been? I don't actually know the answer to that question. I've seen it on a few signs, and I've been able to read. I read all the signs on the trees back at Haramon's Hill, and I understand this man speaking it now. And all right, well, if we're going into uncharted territory, we should bring our translator, Astarok. Would you come over here, please? Should I shoot this wasp down while I have a chance? They seem to want to get rid of it too. I suppose so. Although I can't imagine you would take it down in one shot. I know, but I could do two. If it, by the time it got to us, I could probably. Astarok wanders over and is like, "All right, what are we talking about?" I think uh, Velma's about to uh, draw some aggro, and we could well, use you as a... If you want me to. I don't, I don't want to act, you know, on no. my own. I want to make sure we're, as a party, agreeing to the no, course no, of action. We're, we're hey, here for the library, and... Look, uh, if, if there's not, like, six of those things or whatever, I think that we can take out a hell wasp. There's a wasp, and there are, there are two beings down there speaking about the wasp, and it seems like they also want it taken care of. Um, I don't know if the enemy of my enemy is my friend or not, but I know that that wasp is down there and we want to get rid of it. And I have a chance at firing at it while it's still distracted. Hey, I, I mean, I say take a shot, right? Sure. If okay. it gets close enough, I'll help. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, well, is it is it within 120 feet of me? Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, mm-hmm. I am going to use my, uh, my Skybinder staff and I'm going to fire two Eldritch Blasts at it. Great. Cool. Go ahead and attack. Yeah, cool. All right. So I actually like these little bad boys better. And then once this happens, we will, uh, I suppose, roll for initiative. All right. Okay. That is going to be an 18 and a 26. Uh, Woo! 18 is going to miss. Okay. Oh, Whoa. These things are hard to hit. You just managed to hit them every time okay. last game. <laughs> okay. 20, 26 will hit. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So I will do one. Cool. Two, oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a two, so oh, yeah, no. it didn't hit that hard. All right. <laughs> Let's roll for initiative, everybody. Cool. Last right. time I had to fight bugs, it was easy because they were all attached to me. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't kill them. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well, you're waiting anyways. Yeah. Uh, 20 and higher. 20 to 15. 15 to 10. 13. What is your dexterity? My dexterity is... Uh, 14. Ooh, the hell wasp is going to go before you. I also well, got 13. okay. What's your dexterity? Uh, I think it's just one modifier of one. So probably like a 12. Correct. Great. It is 12. Um, 15 to 10. Nine. Oh, yeah, 10 to 10. Sorry, to five. sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the scion. Two. Okay. Well, I may have just killed you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and we'll see I how Dewey does. Off the thing you were trying to peacefully take care of. <laughs> Dewey. Who shot me? This guy? All right. <laughs> wow. Thanks Dewey. for guessing on our show. <laughs> Dewey rolls high. As per tradition, oh, Dewey? we just beat the crap out of the new character. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, we also beat the crap out of each other, too. Well, not each, we, let, we let Ruben do it. But yeah. <laughs> uh, well, technically, at the first appearance of the character that would eventually become Jimmy's character, I did immediately punch him. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> he wasn't playing him at the time. But right. Yeah. Counts. Dewey uh, is going to go first. And Dewey is not, n- not entirely sure whether they're attacking or not. Mm. So he is going to hold. Okay. Just in case, uh, he's going to hold. He's going to hold an attack. I don't want to say what attack it is because mm-hmm. that buries the lead. Next up is the wasp. Yeah. The wasp is about mm, probably 
I would say 100 feet from you. Um, so it's going to... Yeah, it's pretty far away. So it'll fly up 60 feet. Uh, it'll just dash at you. Okay. So it's right up next to, to you two. Okay. Oh, okay. And it's Perfect. Right on the edge. Okay. Ready to be angry, and it, it bears its sword talons. Um, next is Astarok. Uh, okay. So the wasp comes up. It's like, and Astarok's just gonna whack a mole that thing. Um, <laughs> Great. <laughs> just take the hammer and start whacking at it. Perfect. Vilma, uh, Vilma you don't speak this language, do you? Um, no, I don't speak buzzes and screams. No. Okay. I Astarok, wish. I believe, does. Don't yeah. worry. I speak bug. Buzz, buzz, buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and I'll just start whacking at it. Um, which? Oh, the music. I was like, what's that? Change that? the music, yeah. <laughs> the building's on fire. <laughs> I thought it was a fire. It was like, I had like a beep. I was like, is that a fire alarm? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm using both my hands with the mallet, so Great. it has the Warhammer D10 yep. damage yep. type. And you're using the chill mallet. Check it out. Using that chill mallet. Love Let's it. see. And I, I, I just realized the effect of it makes its attacks have cold damage, and I'm resistant to cold damage. Mm -hmm. It's a combo. That's sweet. That's pretty, pretty <laughs> I combo. very much like that. Yeah. Uh, all right. First attack. Uh, that is a uh, fifteen plus uh, five. Yeah. So twenty. That's a twenty. Hits. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, and I will roll my d10. Okay, roll five. a d10 and two d6s. Right? Yes. And I'll roll my save. Okay, well, I got a, I got a 10. Okay. So 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's 14 damage. Yep, from and the I, first I made my save. Nice. So no slow. Yep. But then I hit with the second attack. Okay. Uh, which is a 13 plus set. 13 plus 8. To yeah. hit or damage? It's 21. No, that's to hit. To hit, yeah, 21 hits. I thought yeah. that that was. I think I actually just thought that was damage. Jeez. Time, but <laughs> I wasn't supposed to. Okay. Um, and so, okay, damage for this. Another d10 plus 2d6. Uh, that will be 11 damage. Okay. Also makes it safe. Cool. Just like smash, smack smash. it and all the ice just like explodes off of it every and time it makes contact. A, especially against the Hell Wasp, which is a being of insignificant fire. Uh, the blue sort of swirls with the red and steams a little bit. And so its attacks, while still quite hot, are also, it's like icy hot. It's like quite uh, hot and oh, quite, quite cool. Icy hot. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, Astrock holds this thing, he's like, I like this thing. <laughs> Lucian. Uh, I'm going to cast, uh, it's not a humanoid. Correct. Oh, darn. It is not a humanoid. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to cast blindness on it. Ooh, yikes. So okay. So it has to make a, uh, a con save. Fifteen. Fifteen, I don't think does it actually. Ooh. Hang on a second. Nope, it is fifteen. Okay. And you hit fifteen? I hit fifteen exactly. Arr. So it does right. not that succumb does to blindness. Alright. Then I will uh it's right next to me, so I am not gonna move. I'm gonna stand right there right. and hold my ground. Um while this is going on, by the way, just to clarify, Tuturu is uh, has remained in the car and is meditating. Okay. Lulu, however, is uh, floating or fluttering around and appears to be interested in the goings and goings on here, but you appear to be handling it. Every time Lulu comes over, like, you're not too true. Go! <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying my best, okay? <laughs> Velma. I need this buggy boy to make a, uh, a wisdom saving throw. Ooh, uh, mm. uh, nope. Three. Yeah, okay. Cool, so it's gonna take 4d6 psychic damage as I whisper something that no one else hears, and mm. it just hears a discordant whisper. Yikes. Uh, and so I'm gonna roll those 4d6s right now. Uh, so I'm casting that at a level two spell slot. I I screwed up. Turns out, my Hell Wasp is vulnerable to cold damage. Yay! <laughs> so keep going. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Yep. Um, so that's gonna do, uh, that's gonna be seven, 
That's going to be eight, and that's going to be 12 psychic damage. Great. And it is now, it must move as far as its speed allows away from me. There you go. Um, the creature doesn't move into obvious dangerous ground, such as a fire or a pit. Sure. Uh, but if it moves away, that also means that that big boy over here gets an opportunity attack That's on true. it. That's true. Actually, so would Lucian. Uh, yeah, little boy does too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the little boy doesn't have an axe that gives it double damage. So roll me uh, four more d6s of cold damage to Hooray. qualify for the extra damage that would have been dealt. Okay. Uh, that is pretty good. That is 11 on okay. the first two. Oh, yeah. And seven. So, so a total of 18. Great. So, you, so your extra cold damage suddenly takes effect because the dungeon master forgot. <laughs> it it, and it with, spreads out from the place that it hit him and cripples some of the legs. And, and as it uh, spreads out and you deliver your psychic attack, mm -hmm. it shatters. Ooh. And the bits of the hell wasp tumble and fall into the library in a, before you can even act. Huh? Oh! Yeah, got it. Right. That's that's great. I look at the little bits of hell wasp that are down. It's like, oh, I have ideas. Mm-hmm. I have ideas. Is is it time? Is it time? Is it time? Do is it time for what? Dewey looks at you. Big round glasses. Oh, it's it. It's time for a performance. <gasps> Yay! It's performance time. Oh, I'm so excited. And Dewey. Uh, you can see mm -hmm. Dewey turns and sort of inhumanly moves away. Okay. Just like very quickly, but kind of herky-jerky okay. moves away. Interesting. And I just shout down to you. Are you okay? Is this going to be a thing? Because you saw what we just did at that wasp. So oh, yes. That's our this calling is... card. So. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, hi. Hi, I'm the Zion. Do um, you know what? It is time for a play. It's time. It's time. Come, come down. It's time for a performance. All right, you're not going to attack us or anything, are you? No, no, no. In fact, I need your help. Okay, he says he's going to give a performance. Are you still speaking Infernal? Huh? Yes. Okay, he says he's going to put on a play for us, and he's not going to attack us. So um, get your weapons ready. <laughs> is that not? Is that not maybe a mistranslation? Because it, I don't understand. No, he why. definitely double doubled down on the giving us a play aspect of it. So we 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 don't. Do we want to see a play in hell? That seems like a bad idea. Listen, yeah, I'm I, not sure. Listen, this venue's... I have spent enough time in the Rakdos areas of town that I'm not afraid of a, of a devil play. All I'm saying is I'm not sure this venue has proper lighting for a live stage show. And I cast I cast uh, uh, dancing lights. Oh right, they fill the room. Is that better for you? Yeah, it does. <gasps> we got does. lighting. We got lighting. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. Oh. I'm I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, great, great. Oh, I still need your help. Please come down. There's look, look. We we made a stage. How do we get down? Is, Is there, there a, a staircase? A rope? A ladder? Um. There is no obvious way to get down. That's why I asked him oh. in character. What to do? <laughs> I thought you were saying. No, I was asking. Okay. Hmm? <laughs> is there? Is there a way for us to get down to see your magnificent performance? My yes, friend? yes. You have to take the long way round. That is not the jagged areas, but if you look, it's it. You know, it. The path is very obvious. I I move the dancing lights that I've cast around the entrance of the cave to see if I can figure out where he's talking about. Sure. Uh, and you are able to see okay. that there is some scaffolding, essentially, on the ceilings okay. that you can uh, climb onto, and then you, you can climb onto the scaffoldings and sort of walk along the scaffolding that's attached to the ceiling. Okay. I can bring all that to you, too. Meanwhile, I grab parts of the destroyed, shattered hell wasp um, for reasons. Mm -hmm. Uh, my friend, um, sorry, what was your name again? Oh, I'm Visayan. Visayan. Um, do you speak the common tongue? Because my friends don't speak whatever language you and I are speaking right now, and it would make it a lot easier for all of us if they could understand. Oh, I, I don't like to be inhospitable, so yes, I can speak in common. It's like, let me switch. How's this? <laughs> Is, it, is this work. does this is this better? <laughs> um, objectively, um, sure. Um, I mean, I get it now. Yeah. Oh, good! I like to be hospitable. <laughs> and then we, uh, yeah, I start to head down the. <laughs> All right. The like pathway that we found. I'll follow your lead, here, Velma. Okay. Well, that's never gotten us in trouble before. All right. Well, don't um, say that after I say I'm going to follow <laughs> no, your I lead. No, I appreciate it. I'm sorry. Um, I will say that you are able to I didn't get us to the hotel. I'm just saying. <laughs> I will say that you're able to get down. Um, 
before you uh, get down to the floor, is there anything that you would like to do or um, uh, say or be prepared or anything like that? Yeah, look, we, we just met this guy. He seems so harmless so far, but, well, you know, let's be careful. We're in Avernus. It, it seems like things are not as good here. Did you get out? Oh, oh, this is from the man who just signed a deal with a pack of devils. Thank yeah, you. well, you know, thank I'm, you for the warning. And I was trying to make it better. <laughs> <laughs> did you get a? Did you get a good look at him? Um, he has horns. There's nothing wrong with that. It's true. It makes me trust him a little more, honestly. Yeah, apparently <laughs> you trust devils willy nilly. So, well, what what kind of horns are they? <laughs> like a ram, like a ram. We've probably never seen a ram. Oh yeah, I guess they wouldn't know. But we've seen well, ram people seen... in. You may have. There's certainly not like minotaur satyr. horns. Like it's yeah. a satyr. Satyrs exist on Ravnica. At least not Ravnica so. minotaur Or like horns. at least, I think like folklore maybe even. Sure. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, yeah. All right. We don't have tieflings, so I'm trying to think of what we right. would have. That would be... Well, you've seen devils. That's true. They remind you more of devil horns. Okay. Not unlike the horns we've seen a lot of people around here, to be honest. Well, a hey, horn's a horn, you know? It's just sure. it's, it's a sign of good people. That's what I've found. Okay. Oh, come, I, I have prepared seats. So he gets a, lo- a bunch of cushions and arrange, arranges them nicely for everyone to sit down. Oh. And you see that there isn't much room for seating. You see that this is not a large audience uh, that he is preparing for. In fact, it seems like it's just you all and one other chair, I think, right? Yes. One other chair plus cushions for you all. Oh, wow, well, it's those cushions. Yeah. There is also a stage. Made entirely of stacks of books. Oh, right. And, and other, and like bookshelves arranged. Oh, right, well, yeah. let's get down there, I guess. Books. But, uh, you know, just be careful. Of course. Right. So I guess we'll make our way down the scaffolding and... Yep. Yep. And you are, you're down. We'll find our seats. Found them. All right, please have a seat as we begin our play, the story of Zariel and how she came to rule Avernus. And next to you in the chair, you see a very bookish, nebbish kind of librarian in a brown vest. You didn't hear him approach. You didn't see him sit down. Is this Dewey? This is Dewey. So, so I, I saw You've him You've seen him okay. before, and he's sort oh. of got like a part in the middle of his hair. I guess I thought you would be part of the play. Oh, oh, I will be. Don't worry. It's it's going to, it's going to, well, you'll see. Where's Lulu? Lulu's here. Lulu oh. is sitting on a small uh, cushion as she well. Does. Okay. Yeah. All right. And now we begin our feature presentation, How Zariel Came to Power, as presented by the Zarian Quarix and Dewey and, 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 and who are you? Velma. Velma. Yeah. Velma and... Uh, uh, Asterok. Asterok and Lucian. And Lucian. All right. All right. Here we go. And gets up on stage. Mm-hmm. Wait, are we part of the production? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like immersive theater. I, as well, much I, as I don't know my lines. That's okay. I will guide you through them. All right. Here we go. It's called immersive theater. It's very popular in amongst the. The Rakdos, mostly, but it sounds like a strange hippie thing. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Rakdos. My grandfather was one. All right, what? now. Oh, we'll address that in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I really want to see the show. All right. Once upon a time, there was an angel named Zariel who lived on Mount Celestia. She gathered all of her people and she called them her little ponies. She called them my little ponies. Oh, my God. <laughs> And now Zariel nagged the other angels for refusing to get involved with the blood war. I need you to play Zariel. Oh, okay. Okay, hold on, hold on. I so he takes a piece of the destroyed hell wasp uh-huh. and comes up with this. Oh my gosh. Oh I, my gosh. I'm so glad that I just <laughs> didn't know any of this was coming. <laughs> I love this so much. Here, you are. This is for Zariel. Oh, oh man! Okay. I'm All right. so happy. Okay. All right, now move my um, down and yes. There are also her two companions. One is Oleander, and Oleander has uh, you. You should play Oleander. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, so the I part got chooses the player. So I got this also from the help. Oh, I believe in in reusing, recycling, <laughs> making do with what you sure, need. Yeah, yeah. Great. All right, and then the other companion named Pokemon. 
Oh, All right. Oh, no. <laughs> now, Pokemon, uh, <laughs> let me get this other part from Adohel Watch. Astrock, you look hilarious. Yeah, what was that? Okay, so <laughs> I got this. Do not ask which part of the Hell Watch I got this from, but you should wear this. Uh, I, I do, do, can I not, can I not wear you it? Should, you should, you should, this is gonna be very I'll fun. Just hold it. Lulu uh, pipes up and is like really, really excited for this. Blue, don't ruin the play for all of us. It would be rude. I just don't know if it's been disinfected or... <laughs> well, it was cold and shattered, so if that helps... Close enough. I wouldn't give you anything that's infected on purpose. <laughs> oh my god. All right, now, at this point, Zariel is nagging Oleander and Pokemon, why aren't you getting involved with the blood war? So, uh, uh, you, what's something that you really, really like to do? Uh, paperwork. You like paperwork, okay, <laughs> great. Okay, and you, Oleander, what's something that you really like to do? Uh, I like fighting people. And you like fighting people. Okay, great. Well, this might be a little bit different, but Zariel, what I'd like you to do is try to convince Oleander to fight different people and convince a Pokemon um, to not to leave the paperwork behind so they can fight in this blood war. And go. Pokemon, <clears throat> imagine all of the the catalog you could do of all the enemy's armies if you come with us. You don't actually catalog armies. It's not how... It's not the... Well, somebody recounts a history, don't they? It might well be you. No, that's... You need a historian for that. I do more statistics and lawyer. Imagine uh, the statistics you could recount of the armies we're fighting. Yes, Zario, that sounds wonderful and superb, and I, of course, want to do that. And yes. you... Uh, Oleander, you want to hit those dudes? Nay, Zeriel, I need a better reason. Oh, They're real jerks. Am I supposed to fight? Wait, wait, I'm sorry. I, I don't know my character that well. Do, do I eventually agree or am I going to fight this? Well, eventually you will agree, but you need to put up resistance. Okay, okay. It's for better Yay. drama. Come on. All right. <laughs> All right. So the superior. I should be doing the voice that I of Astarok doing of uh, what was her name? Um, uh, Razia. Razia. Yeah. yeah. Whatever I voice. Think we should you go like. fight these people. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. So the superiors of Mount Celestia said that it is bitter not to interfere, but Zariel says no, bitch. No, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so it is tough. <laughs> so now Zariel leads the other angelic hosts and leads them to a place to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. <laughs> uh, um, so then... Fighting demons. Oh. So, sure. they, so they go to this city called El Torito. And El Torito, they go there to train their angelic army. Now what they do is they train in a montage. This is the point where we do interpretive dance. Now go. Oh, I know a good thing oh, about dancing. Uh, absolutely not. I will. That's where I draw. Go ahead and roll performance check. Okay. I just. Uh... Um, as you're sitting there, not trying not to dance, mm -hmm. go ahead and roll a history check. Okay. <laughs> that I can do. Am I supposed ten. to be dancing too? Sure. Uh, uh, okay. You're ten. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good dance for for interpretive. You know. Yeah. You, you go go back to your dancing school, kind of. I got twenty four. Twenty four. Yeah. El Torito oh, you bet I got a is not a term you've heard before, <laughs> but it sounds like a place you've heard before adjacent. It sounds similar. I mean, I... El Torito. El Torito, okay. Sounds similar to... See, if you, get, see if you get there. What am I getting? I, I've, got, I've gotten there, but I didn't make a roll, so I don't know. <laughs> El Torito. <laughs> Uh, I suppose <laughs> I would have gone there, but all right. All right. So that sort of is like, mm, that's a weird pronunciation. All right. And so they train. They must be swift as the horsey river and with the force of the great baboon, they were ready. So Zarya led her army and charged into Avernus, riding a war mammoth with trumpets blazing. I need a war mammoth. Oh, oh, me! Can I be the war mammoth? Okay! Lulu pipes up. What is, what's a war mammoth look like? Okay, they're really, really big. It's big enough for Zariel to ride on. It's supposed to be impressive and scary. I'm not impressive or scary. You can pretend. That's what a lot of this is. 
That's all right. I'm willing to suspend disbelief. Wait, I, I, are you all not kidding? Okay. All right, so she will float up on stage, and she will be standing, like, proud and trunk out and ready to go. Okay. What do I do now? Okay. I need you to blare like a trumpet. Oh, I can do that. I did that before. Well, uh, maybe just a, a few decibels lower than that. Acting like you did. Act, acting, okay. <gasps> and instead of the blast that came out when uh, she blew the roof off the joint in the last episode, mm-hmm. instead, sparkles. Oh, very pretty. From her trumpet, as she remembers how to cast. Or, ca- or use trumpet of sparkles. Ooh. Well named. <laughs> and uh, it looks like it is it, so mysterious. What could it mean? It looks oh. like it deals radiant damage, but you oh. don't know how much or to what. Okay. Um, but we all just took it. So. But, <laughs> right. but it's, it's it's out into the audience. <laughs> Um, where so Dewey uh, where Dewey is sitting, but Dewey is sort of like is under it, um, and he's sort of sort of like so the way he moves is a bit like a marionette puppet. Okay, Creepy. and he sort of ducks out of the way. He says, and he sort of claps and and then comes back up and is sort of. Are you okay, Dewey? I realize this part is very interactive. Oh, don't worry, I'm good. Okay, I'm, I'm all right. Let me know if I need to if I'm doing something in a sec. But this is great. I love this. Okay, okay, so. So they come in with trumpets blaring, and now they fight. Now, we can't really, really fight, because we're in a place that's a library, and all these things all are vulnerable, so instead, I need you to insult a demon. I need you to insult Ba-Ram you. <laughs> um, uh, your, your horns are too curly. I'm sorry. I that I I didn't mean that. I for the horns, Astaroth. It, it just what came to mind first, and then I immediately realized how insensitive that was mm-hmm. to the greater uh, uh, presence. What we. <sighs> what about you? You weren't leading the charge. You call yourself a demon? I have seen cats more frightening than you. Oh, <gasps> good. Ooh. Ooh. good one. Good, good one. one. That's good. That's good. Okay. What what about you, Pokemon? Uh, uh, you look quite soft and not someone I would bring into battle. Oh, Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Very, very nice. Very nice. Oh yeah, that, that that would be a burn where I come from too. Like, oh, I'll have to remember that. Yes, yes. So this sheep has been burned in trying to fight. However, as much and as much as they fight, they bravely fought. But even in their best fight, they still lost. So now everyone act in agony that you lost. Oh, oh. oh. darn it. Oh. Also, my horn Bummer. fell off during the battle. Oh, no. <laughs> is, is that supposed to happen? Does, does, uh, I don't does know. Pokemon's it's, horn fall off? It seems like good improv. No, uh, I don't know. I don't like people going off script like that. No, it doesn't no. Seem like yes I give you me, my I horn. I bequeath it to you, my friend, my greatest friend. No, you can't! Okay, all right. Well, I tried. It's almost over. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So, the nine hells. I cast cure wounds and fixed your horn for you. Look at that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ariel. You're welcome. <laughs> I know how much it would hurt your feelings if you lost it, so I made sure to fix it for you. That's good. That's good. You're so generous a spirit. Thank I you. like that. I like that. Let's All right. Get this over with. The theater. All right. The nine hells were too much, so some retreated back and they wear the bell of shame. Shame this sheep. Shame. Shame. You fuck sheep. You're, you're, am I supposed to be? You're, yeah, yeah, look, shame the sheep. You're we sheep. We can hear where you are. Uh, you're super very, sheepish. Your eyes are too boo, big for your head. Boo. I don't know. You look silly. You'll never be stealthy again. I, you have a bell. I think I fell asleep like with a, a bean bag of you. You look ridiculous. I've never even heard of you before. Your name doesn't ring a bell. Oh, I don't like to eat know. mutton. Oh, oh I like that. Okay, sorry about that, but we have to have you insulted. Okay, all right, now this one's gonna go away. Hi, my friend. All right, and Zariel loses her hand, and it give you like a dagger. It's like, okay, cut off your hand. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Okay, <laughs> but just pretend to cut off. I'd like, you know, 
Oh, okay. Just, just pretend. Oh, just, I lost my hand. Oh, oh. ow, ow, ow. Oh, okay. Oh, how dare. Oh. All right. And <laughs> her two faithful companions, Oleander and Pokemon, refuse to leave her side, wanting to stay until the end, so they all get captured. Oh. oh. Then, as Moody... I just said goddess, because I, well, you got captured. I'm sorry, I went out of line there. No, it's no, that's okay. That's okay. I encourage inventive improv. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, as Modius, Lord of the Nine Hells, and pretty hot guy, because like, Nine Hells, oh, got her God. in front of them, <laughs> and God. guess what he did care. to Zoriel? What? What did he do? So, well, guess. Um, uh, he's, uh, um, he gave he, her a cake. He made her leave. Uh, Fought. Filed their taxes late. <laughs> we should talk later. Okay, <laughs> so, Asmodeus was so impressed by Zariel's commitment to fighting her enemies that it would be a waste to destroy precious leadership. So, in his magnitude of he made Zariel the ruler of Avernus. <gasps> oh. What? I know. No. I know. It was really strange. How can an angel suddenly become a ruler in hell? Because I'm very good at it. But exactly. Not... Go, yes, use that attitude. Use that attitude. But I don't I don't I don't I don't like that. Lulu is like looking sort of has a has a bit of a look in her eye of like she doesn't like where this is going. Well, let's let's finish the story so that you can understand things better. You don't stop things in the middle of a story. That's like stopping things in the middle of an operation. Okay. It looks really bad when you stop in the middle of it. You wait until the end to watch it all get better. Okay. Okay, great. So, so she took the, she took the rulership and she became a transformer. <laughs> Her hair fell out, her wings became black, and she oh. fell from grace, and her two generals, oh. Pokemon, decided to join Zariel and evolved to become a devil. Oh, you can uh, take off the horn now. Oh, wonderful. I'm a yes. devil. I don't need that. Haha, -ha. you're, right. you're not going to give me two that. horns, are you? Both of you like no, that no, idea. No, no, no. You, just, you know, just use your fingers. Oh, okay. Okay, great. And Oleander refused to be part of Zariel's new rulership, so he died. I'm not going to be part of your rulership, Zariel. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but Zariel brought him back from death, and he became a death knight, because when you're dead, you can't really object. Oh. I revive you. You're uh, mine now. Guess I can't object anymore. Good job. And that is a story of how Zariel came to rule over Avernus. What? is the moral of this play. Uh, I don't, I don't like the story. Hmm? Don't, don't cross Zariel? Well, hell, well, that's probably one of them, yes. Hell, yes. hell turns everybody bad? Well, you could choose to look at it that way. Uh, fund your local theater department. Oh, you should always do that, always, always fund your local that, theater actually. department. Uh, always yeah. fund the arts. Yeah. Patronize the arts. As a performer, uh, I actually agree with that a lot. Which, by the way, as uh, Visayon says that line, he he sort of says, oh, that's very true, and then looks just sort of off into the distance at no one in particular, and says it to no, no one who's there, just like an empty bookshelf. So, bookshelf, audience, something really important to realize that even if you screw up over the things that you want to do, regardless of whatever is in your life, just remember that if someone else looks at you, they assume that you tried, they didn't assume that you failed. If you at least tried the thing that you wanted to do, then that is better than doing nothing at all. Uh, and now yeah. bow! Oh. oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, that, that, that was neat. I, I, I think I maybe lost a bit of the thread going through because I was really focusing on my character development, but but it seemed neat. Astrolog, I must say, you were a rather graceful dancer. Oh, well, thank you. That was really great, Visayon. Well done. Yay! Yay! You need these back? Is this going for a prop closet? Or? Well, I mean, they were part of the 
hell lost that were broken. Oh. You keep keep those if you no, want. No, I will. You know what? I will respectfully donate it back to the theater program. Okay. Yeah, yeah this is gonna go on the wasp. Is it in my hair? I think he think it's out. I mean, it's so dirty. Oh, there's a little bit of oh. like it could. Is that there. is that a true story? Yes, that is a true story. That's how. That's how Zeriel got here? Yes. You seem surprised. That's actually a very well-known story, but this is our interpretation of these things. We heard some of that before from Maggie, but some of the blanks were filled in there. Well, if you want a story, you I, go to the library. I think it was lost a bit in translation from Infernal to Common, but... Ah. Well... I think... I think I was... the War Mammoth? Well, you were playing the War Mammoth. No. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, I think I was the War Mammoth. Were, was the scale of this battle much smaller than we expected? Or? No. It was massive. It was enormous. It was kind of like, kind of like that. But it was... I don't, I don't remember the specifics, but it was. I I, I need to I, I I I can't think about this right now. And Lulu is gonna wander off into some of the stacks. Don't don't stray too far. We don't know how long we're going to be here. Okay. Bad things happen when we break apart. Yeah. As we've learned a lot over the last couple of days. Don't okay. split the party is what I've heard several times. Okay. Hey. I, I don't mean to jump back too far in the conversation, but I couldn't help it. You know who the Rakdos are? Yeah, my uh, my grandfather was uh, came from a place, uh, and uh, he said that he's Rakdos, and he was a party planner for a guy with like I guess big R for whatever. And then he threw a party, and then somehow he landed here. Must have been some party. Okay. Well, do, do, do you know how he got here? Uh, how he came to Avernus from Ravnica? Ago? Because we can get back that way. Because you're the first person we run into who really knows, has heard of of Rakdos or, or Ravnica or anything like that. So wait, Ravnica? Yeah, Ravnica, like like my cousin's Svetavid. Yeah. Uh, you, your family, Svetavid, is your cousin. Yeah, he talks like this. Oh, Yo. We, we met him. <laughs> We don't sp it's oh. really embarrassing. Speaking of the Rakdos <laughs> and plays. Yeah, yeah. Well, do, do, do you know how to get back there? No, no. Uh, Grandpa, like he. So what happened was Grandpa, like, was throwing this bacchanal, and suddenly he was experiencing all this joy, and then boom, he's suddenly here. That just doesn't really give us a clue. He, 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 he doesn't have a clue either. What, what was the, the, the... Wait, is he the, still here? Well, you know, like, the last place I saw him, I don't talk to him very much, would be in El Torito. Well, the, the, the Bacchanal he had, what was, was it on a tree? On a... He doesn't tell me those details. It's embarrassing to ask your grandpa, Grandpa, how did you throw an orgy? You don't ever ask those things. That's kind of embarrassing. Is that what, what, is your grandfather, means? what is your grandfather's name? Not not because of that question, but because of the previous line of questions. Oh, oh, okay. The Ravnica element, not the orgy. I know how to throw a good orgy. I don't need that. Um, oh! What, what is your grandfather's name? Oh, uh, my grandfather's name is Croesus. 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 Uh, is, is this your library, or...? Oh, no, no, no. I got here because I was doing some research on various places. If you want to find anything, this is the place to find anything. There are at least 12 different versions of the story of Zariel. Like, lots of just different things, abandoned knowledge. Like, if you want to really look for it... Oh, you should ask Dewey. Dewey's really, really good at knowing oh, these things. Oh, okay, great. I love it. Love it. <laughs> I just got it. Sorry. <laughs> Love it. Well, look, we, we've come here to try and find out a little more about the, the city of uh, El Torel. Maybe it has something to do with your El Torito city. Yeah, probably. Probably. By the way, before you go, you take me with you. Uh, t take 
take you with us? Well, go in, do do your research. What I mean, like, there's, there's a lot of what knowledge. Are you, what are you talking about up there? Dewey is sort of like leaning from his chair when you whisper and oh. trying to... Oh, we're talking about how they were in this place where my grandfather was from. Okay. Uh, Dewey, I have some questions. Sure. And he will sort of amble up. I cast message to you while he gets the while he's running the distraction. Mm-hmm. And I go, are you a prisoner here? Uh, it would be scary for me to leave knowing how paranoid Dewey is, because he could do something drastic to me. He's very powerful. Mm. Good to know. Um, I will cast message again and convey that to you while you're talking to Dewey. All right. And I'll do the little uh, thought strand thing and hand it to you. Uh. <laughs> that, was, that was a message. That's how you get stomachaches. <laughs> Dewey, Dewey does not see you hand it okay. off. Mm-hmm. Um, Dewey, uh, so we are travelers. We're not from Avernus. We didn't uh, buy a ticket mm. to this realm, if you understand the meaning. Uh-huh. Um, we're looking on a way to get home. Ravnica. We're from Ravnica. That's our Ravnica. Home. I don't know where Ravnica is. I'm not from here either. Or, or do you know if there's a book or books that could help us? Sure, in this we library? could take a look. We could go through some of the books of, of other of other places. Sure. Is is this your? Uh, no, I was. I I woke up here by accident. Um, I was. Um, I I would like to get home too. Where, where where's home for you? I'm from the Underdark. Oh, I, I, I don't know what that is. It's a it's it's a it's a place that's underground, um, which is why I like it here. Um, you know, I don't like being outside much. Can, can I tell what Dewey is? Make a um, insight check. What does he? What does Dewey look like? Mm-hmm. Insight check. It's a three plus numbers, so okay. probably not great. Dewey looks like a human person, but also 10% like a marionette doll, like a puppet, like a facsimile of a person. Okay. A little bit. But you can tell it's a person. All right. Uh, well, let's, uh, if, we, if you don't mind giving us a tour so we can find Absolutely. some... Absolutely. Sure. Come right this way. We'll, we'll take a look. Um, we'll go to the... We'll go to the Outer Plains section. All right. Is there a travel a section on planar travel? Sure, we can go to that Intra- section too. Planar travel. Yeah. Great. Good idea. Um, go ahead and roll investigation for me. Um, this uh, this is the portion of the show where you ask questions and then I answer them. So. Okay. I love this game show. I think <laughs> I think while Lucian is being shown around the library mm-hmm. by Dewey. As someone who has once worked in a library myself and like bookstores, I mm-hmm. think I know my way around libraries anyway, so sure. I'm kind of going off and doing my own thing. Great. And that's going to be a 13 plus. So I have a 16. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll a perception check as well. Okay. And then what did you get? I rolled a natural one. Great. So I assume I can't read any of the books. Sure. <laughs> I'm it's just like, uh, it's a little dark to, uh, you know, 14. I need 14. reading glasses to really get things up close. So we'll start here. You okay. rolled investigation. I got, I got a dirty 20. Dirty 20 on investigation. And your question was, uh, or your topic was. Uh, I chose, uh, I guess, you're choosing planar travel, is that you said? Um, I asked Dewey about interplanar travel. Yeah. Uh, so mine will be, mine was similar, so something about planes in general, I guess. Okay. So you get, um, you get to the section on the planes. You get to, um, you see a number of books, many of which are written in common, many of which are written in other languages. Um... You see some that are written in the script that was similar to that that you now know is Infernal. Many of them are in Infernal, but actually not as many as you might think. Most of them, in fact, are written in a much more... In- yeah, there you go. You get the... <laughs> we'll, I'll get to that. Um, many of them are written in a uplifting kind of script that just makes you feel good. Um, you hmm. don't read Celestial, do you? 
I don't think so, no. <laughs> Many of them are written in a language that makes you feel good. Most okay. of them, as a matter of fact. Okay. Um, it uh, it seems as if the, the shelves themselves are written in that language, uh, too. Okay. Um, uh, you find a lot of information. You get a massive tome that's on a plinth that is titled The Forgotten Realms. All right. And it goes into great detail over the various realms. I will look at this because this is something that uh, Mookie mentioned Mookie to Mookie specifically referenced The Forgotten Realms. Right. Yes. And you see that there are rings of the realms. You see the layout of the planes, essentially. You see the material plane. You see two, one plane above and one plane below that are also of the material-ish similar, called the Shadowfell and the Feywild. You see the elemental planes around them. You see the astral sea around them. And you see the outer planes, the beast lands and the Mount Celestia, which was referenced in the play. You see the abyss. You see the nine hells. You see a number of other worlds you haven't heard of. And then scattered on the outside of those, not in the cartography of the planes, are other worlds. You see one labeled the City of Doors. You see one labeled Eberron. You see one labeled Ravnica. And you see many others dotted around the outside, not in the central cosmology, but located elsewhere. You also, later, find a different book named Igrasil that has a more large tree on the front, and it details many of the planes that are branched okay. from the world tree. Okay. And you can have more detail on those if you choose, or you can move yes. on to other books. I will, but I'll let well, right. What I'm going to say for role play uh -huh. is that I asked Dewey for info, info about interplanetary travel, and then I walked away. Sure. So why don't we continue to have you role play what you're finding, because like he's walking you around and showing you things. And while that's happening, I am ritually casting Comprehend Languages. So I'm okay. off in the corner, spending about 10 minutes casting a spell. OK. With your perception, by the way, mm -hmm. I will say you catch Dewey walking. Between the stacks. Okay. While he's talking to... While he's talking to Dewey. Is it like two different Deweys? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. Do I ca only catch two so far? So far. Okay. So I'm going to be casting while it's And happening. you... I rolled a natural one. Great. So I think I saw so many books and I kind of zoned out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, ah. Found in leather, so you're like, wait a minute. Right. Look, I've got a letter and I read it plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the reading I'm really interested in. Do you want to be doing anything while this is happening? Um, I'm sitting back and watching very carefully. However, I'm listening to some of this stuff because I'm also fascinated with, since I don't know anything about Ravnica or anything that's being discussed. Great. Um, uh, what's, uh, so these books, uh, they were written by the ones who owned this place, or where do these come from? This is... I mean, I don't really know what this library is called, but um, it's been here a long time. I mean, if you look at the architecture, it's not like anything else from around the plain. It's not like anything else I've seen since I've been here. This place is horrible. This... Avernus world right. is strange and different, but it didn't always used to be like this. Apparently, Avernus used to be a paradise. I mean, you look around and you can see beautiful trees and rivers, and I mean, I don't like sunshine, but a lot of people do. And, you know, all that's left are these tapestries and these mosaics of it. Yes, it, it does look like a paradise, and I've heard that before, but th this book does talk about other planes, and one of them is our home. Mm. Interesting. I, I don't see... Well, I, wait, would the Underdark be in there? Um, probably not specifically referenced as the Underdark, no. Okay. Um, 
I, I don't see the Underdark in this book, but... Oh, uh, the Underdark is, is part of the material plane. Oh, so it's in there. Th- then you also need to get to this... Yeah, uh, I need to get to the, the middle the middle part. It's a specific part of the middle part. How, how long have you been here? Oh. Oh, very long time. I don't know. I mean, I've been here for most of it. You know, I... There was it, there was a bit of a an accident, and um, I, they you know they they were doing some experiments, and um, you know they they think they're smarter than everybody, so they were doing whatever it is they do, and you know I I was I had a good life just as as my as I was I was I had a good life just as myself. And then they started poking and prodding, and now I know things, and I'm smart, and then they sent me here, which isn't fun. I was much happier just, just as, just, just as me, just as what I was before. And now I'm here. So, to, to me, it sounds like Dewey is sort of hiding something. Mm-hmm. Um... Is that obvious, or would you, would you like me to roll for it? It's pretty obvious he's hiding something. Um, I think coming out of my ritual, I convey to Astaroth that there's more than one Dewey here mm-hmm. walking around. Just keep it cool. We don't know what's happening yet, and I think Lucian's onto something, too. So Lulu's going to come back and say, I saw another Dewey when yeah, I was I over there. Too. How many Deweys are I'm going to cast message to Lucian, and I'm going to say, there is more than one Dewey in this library system. Um, Dewey, would you, um, uh, would you be able to, uh, find some books for me while I speak to the Scion here? Sure. Um, what do you need? Um, uh, Avelma mentioned some books about planar travel, if you could find those for us. Absolutely. Them here. I'll, go, I, I, I'll go get you some. Thank you Great. very much. I'm going to take Arthur off my shoulder mm-hmm. and have her wander, mm-hmm. and, like, her active quest is looking for more Deweys to see if there's, she's looking for more than just the two we've seen so far. Cool. Um, roll stealth for her. Okay, let me see what her um, stealth is. Go ahead. What's really going on here? Oh, um, so I'm going to speak in a way that's going to be very oblique, and hopefully you get it. Uh, go on. So, uh, sometimes when someone is very, very paranoid, you will not know how they're going to react. So you have no way to really think about how to leave an area. And I realize as I'm talking that that's not really oblique. Not quite. Um, is... I've been here a week. A week? You see, when the hell wasp comes in, I at least can, um, when they break apart, I can make a nice barbecue when they're dead. You've been living off the hell wasps. Hell wasp meat is not that bad. Oh, probably you shouldn't be touching that. <laughs> uh, it's so a mating part. Are we... <laughs> 15, by the way. Oh, why did you tell me? Are we in danger? Let me put it this way. I think as long as Dewey is occupied... He's not really wanting to harm you. I don't think he really wants to harm you, but... Is Dewey going to let us leave? I don't know, unless we can think of a way to deal with that. It's obvious that he wants some level of attention. He's obviously lonely. Do you know what Dewey is? What he truly... What, what I know? Um, I would have you... So you've been here a week. Yeah. I will have you roll at advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, and this can be insight. Okay. I think it's a good one. Yeah, I'll roll with insight. Uh, that would be a 16. Okay. With advantage. Um, you have seen multiple Deweys. In fact, you've put on plays... With Dewey sitting in the audience and other Dewey puppets mm-hmm. on stage with you, mm-hmm. so- Sound of Music style. Yes. 
Um, you know that he can be in multiple places at once. You know that all of these separate versions of Dewey are one Dewey. Mm-hmm. You do not know exactly what Dewey is. You do know that Dewey has... Um, hmm. You know that Dewey is um, averse to fire. Mm-hmm. Does not like fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and that when you kill a hell wasp, Oftentimes, Dewey will uh, attack the Hell Wasp, essentially, mm-hmm. and take the brain portion. So, so this is what I know. Uh, it's kind of like a zombie because it likes brains. Uh, of Hell Wasp, not mine, but uh, I'm assuming that. If you can talk to it, you can keep it entertained for a while, but uh, but if not, it, it has to eat. You're you're calling Dewey an it now. Uh, well, it's more like there's a series of Deweys. Like I I've named them uh, Dewey A and Dewey B and Dewey C. They all act a little differently. One one has a crooked smile. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one always wants to salute you. Mm-hmm. It's it's trying hard to to be distinct. I would also say that you in particular mm-hmm. have noticed that, and the rest of you haven't noticed this yet. I wouldn't say, except for maybe Artie, that. There is a smell of sulfur occasionally mm-hmm. when you're around the library, maybe tw- once or twice in the past week. Mm-hmm. Oh, where's two turtle in here? Actually, I think that might actually be. Yeah, so um, the cat has advantage on perception checks that rely on smell. Great, so go ahead. Yeah. No, a cat's replaced two turtle. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's going to be. It's not going to be great because it's going to be a nine or a six. Okay. Um, you had a 15 on stealth, though, and you were already looking. Mm-hmm. You can just sort of follow behind one of the Deweys. Okay. And you see it sort of fall in line with another Dewey, mm-hmm. and they merge together. Okay. And they begin walking, and then another one comes in and merges together. So we've counted four total so far. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's walking towards the planner <laughs> travel section, and, and when they get to the planner travel section, they split off again. And they pick off some books off of shelves, and they stack the books on top of each other, and they all reconvene back into each other and begin walking back. And Artie can pick up the distinct smell of sulfur um, as they walk. And walks is walking back towards the regular group. Okay. Um, I would have you roll regular perception based on sight. Okay. Now. This is Velma or Artie? The cat. Okay, Artie is going to roll. Okay, that's 11. Okay. Um, yep. It begins walking back. And Artie's passive perception is 13 in case you need to sure. anything. Sure, it's fine. Uh, meanwhile, you rolled a natural one, so you're still enamored with the scene and how Interesting and beautiful this place is, even though it's full of books. It's still quite the sight to behold, this grand library. You don't expect to see something like this in a wasteland like this. And because he rolled a one, the way that we're doing inspiration for this campaign, it, or this this uh, season at least, when you roll a one, I give you inspiration, because you're all role-playing spectacularly. And that's how you get inspiration. Hurrah! I think once Velma has cast her comprehend languages and Artie's doing investigation work, Velma is just like going hog wild looking at books. Like okay. she's reading through stories, just looking through things. She like doesn't even know where to begin. Like she's actually like, I'm actually going to make a strange constitution check that make Perfect. play later. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Interesting choice. All right. We'll see what happens. So what do I have hanging that I've still left to answer? Uh, nothing. We were talking and mm-hmm. I was waiting to see when Dewey gets back, but great. Mm-hmm. I think Astrock will probably make his way over to um, Lucian. Yeah. When I see him, I'll be like, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Blue, 
I don't know if uh, Velma says that there's uh, other guys going around. Right. She mentioned uh, we need to we need to leave, and I'm not sure if this is the kind of library where you can check out books. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean, Lee? We we just got here. This is what we were trying to find. Have we figured out what we got to do in El Torel to make it out? Dewey is a fan of knowledge, and not just paper knowledge, but knowledge that's inside your head. Well, it sounds like you guys would probably get along pretty well, right? But not if he's eating my brains. E eating your brains? That's what I mean. Oh, come on. That, that's that's got to be absurd, right? It's got to be absurd, but where are we? Of he, course it's absurd. He just talked nicely to us, and we did a little play for him and stuff. Is he, you think he's going to eat our brains? Might eat mine. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I'm just saying. <laughs> you just told me you read one paper over and over again. Well, I know that paper very well, Blue. It's a good paper. And I know my gut very well. It's got a lot of words on it. It does. It's very impressive. But... Hey, I, I'm back. I've got a lot of stuff for you. And uh, Dewey walks in with a huge... You can't even see his face behind the stack of books that oh, he's coming back. Uh, Astrock, would you uh, grab those books? Please. Yeah, 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 sure. Thanks, Astarok. <laughs> and the tiny bookish librarian hands you a stack of books that is, like, pretty heavy. <laughs> oh! Um, <clears throat> surprising amount of strength in this tiny librarian. What's wrong, Astarok? It's just way heavier than I expected. You know, you get surprised by how heavy books are, because, like, one piece of paper, that's, like, nothing. But then you just put a whole bunch of them together, and it's a lot. That's right. Yes, it adds up quick. And it did not look that heavy when, when you were carrying it. That's so amazing. You're, so you're, that, Dewey must be pr plenty strong, then, right, I, Astro? I try to be. Yes, flex. Mm. Uh, what, uh, well, how do I actually check out a book? We, we do need to leave. We're actually on a schedule. Yes, so, so you're you're gonna you're gonna go in thirty or so minutes. Yes, we do have other places to go. This was a bastion to find in the middle of a wasteland, but where are you uh, gonna go? Uh, I I believe we're trying to find the city of El Torel next. Uh, but well, you, we would love to check out some books, and we would obviously return them when they're done. I'm I'm very good. I've never missed. Um, I've never had a late fee or anything. But I don't want you to go. Oh, uh, uh, okay, well, I mean, I can. But, um, can you take me with you? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we got room in the back of the car, right? We could, uh, uh, um... Uh, yeah, we do, but uh, up there is uh, sunlight. I, uh, are you, you're not allergic or any sort of... No, I'm not, I'm not allergic. Um... <sighs> Don't freak out. Okay. Okay. All right. Always love to hear that. Okay. Wait here. Just a second. And Dewey will just sort of stand there. And then another Dewey walks up and stands next to him. Then another Dewey walks up huh. and stands next to him. A total of ten Deweys. Huh. Oh. Come all together. Huh. And are sort of standing there. And then from behind them a huge ooze emerges. Small tendrils attaching to each of the bottoms of the heels, mm -hmm. barely indistinguishable from the ground, comes into view. You recognize this as an oplex. This oplex uh, appears to be an adult elder. Oplex. Through your study, you know that oblexes were once oozes or slimes or jellies, experimented upon by mind flayers and given intelligence. I bet the apple doesn't fall too far from that tree. I step forward and I speak in what I don't know is infernal, but this language, and I say to Dewey, do you understand this language? The ten Deweys will collapse into the one that you're talking to. Mm -hmm. The ooze. Large and red with sort of shadow figures in it. Mm -hmm. Behind. Just to says, jog my out-of-character memory. This is like the, the Make-A-Wish mm -hmm. monster, this right? This is the Make-A-Wish monster. Yeah, this one's cool. It's way awesome. And he says, I can understand this one. 
Okay. I can understand a lot of them. I understand that what you're seeking right now, more than anything else, is companionship. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I have a deal to make you. Okay. You let my friends go. Uh Uh-huh. You let him go. Uh Uh-huh. And I will stay here with you. Provided my deal is that you do no physical harm to me. You don't eat my brain or take anything from me. Everybody else goes safely and peacefully with no harm, and I will stay here with you, provided that I am nourished and that I am free to read as many of these books as I would like. I don't know. What, what are you, what are you speaking in Inferno? What's she saying? I know. What, what, right. what, what, what whoa, she... whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. Wait. I, I, I get what you're doing, but. Do we? Do you really want to stay here? You don't want to stay here in this library where you're not going to have any new experiences. You're just going to have a bunch of old experiences from all these books. Um. Would you like to leave? It sounds like you like to leave. I didn't know this. I kept entertaining you because I thought you were going to be lonely. But if you, if you want to go, we. I mean... We can go. Do you want to stay? I want my friends to leave peacefully, and I'll do that in the most bloodless way possible. If you want to leave, I don't want to keep you here as a captive, but it seemed like you couldn't go. I can't get... I mean, I can't... It's tough for me to to get out because I'm in here now. I can't... I can't get out of that way. Why not? Well, it's way up there. We could carry you. You could carry... You see me? You see me. You see all that? That's me. This, this isn't, this isn't me. Could you pile on top of yourself until you made like a ladder of Deweys and then pull yourself out of the hole? I've never tried that. Probably, I mean, I, I'm, uh, I'm pretty heavy. I could give it a shot, I guess. What about another way out? Is there any other way out of this place? I mean, it's a library. It's got to have doors. It's got to have hallways and passages. I've been here a really long time. I haven't seen another way out except for <sighs> there is one other way out. All right. Okay. I don't, I, I don't want to go that way. Well, 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 what is that way? Let's let's at least let's not shoot down the idea before we've at least talked it through, right? Let's explore her options. We Mr. have right? We have a machine, and we have friends who have machines, and they can probably lower down. They they have plenty of chains. That's almost all they've got. Is they're like up to here with chains. They really like they chains. Drop, I got one of them. They could drop some of the chains down and pull you out if that would help. I would like to go home. Back to the Underdark. I don't know how to get off of this plane, though. Maybe it's somewhere in these books. If we can look through them, but... And I can show you the other, the other way, but I don't like it that way. Okay, so which way do you like? I, wanna, I mean, of the two, I want to go out that way. Okay. Then there's enough brain power here to figure it out. We will figure it out. Yes. Can you survive up there on your own? Oh, yeah. Sure. It's easier for me down here. I like it better down here, but I can survive up there. Do you want to stay down here or do you want to go? I want to go. I want to go home. All right. Uh, Astarok. I want to go home just like you want to go home. Okay. Uh, Why don't you head back up and ask the Eighth if they can make some sort of harness to grab Dewey from this pit? Sure. We can can give it a shot. We We might need to make this hole a little bit bigger. Do what you gotta do. I'll head on back up. Okay. By the way, that was the result of my role earlier. What was? Uh, me, uh, Delmar offering to stay in the library. Nice. I was I was debating oh. if, if her constitute if she would be able to resist the thrall of, of the, the amount library. of knowledge and books that were here. You're allowed uh. to stay down here in this library for as many questions as you all have, and because I haven't answered all mm-hmm. of your questions yet. I mean, I just got these okay, other well, books. Out of right. character, let's assume that Velma asks questions for Tuturu as well, yep. so that if Ashlyn wants to ask any questions when she's back, you can, we can say that she asked those. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Um, so over the next while, uh, the four of you and Lulu and, uh, Dewey, the Ublex, look through these books for hints and clues. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of information on the Underdark. You see a lot of information on, um, uh, 
uh, Mount Celestia, where Lulu is from. You see a lot of information on the history of Avernus. And you see some history on Ravnica. I would say, what role do you think it would be to find history on the, the pact? Animal handling. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it'd be history. It'd be history. History, <laughs> history, nature. Maybe arcana. History, nature, and arcana are all close for me. Okay. So I'll let you pick whichever of those you want. Let's okay. see. And investigation. Yeah. What I got. Uh, I'll do investigation. Cool. I feel like that's more Velma's thing. Great. History, nature, arcana. Um, I yeah. will use. Uh, I will use fighters investigate or what, investigation was one right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll use fighters investigation, which is I go and find the biggest book. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, oh, nobody's been able to read this, but I can because I'm strong. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. One of the benefits of one of his weapons is that he can substitute his his weapon proficiency for a, a, a different skill, like the fighter's lock pick. <laughs> oh so, my god, that's yeah. nice. I, I use strength for yeah. pretty much Oh yeah, anything. you use your strength as the bonus. <laughs> yes. I got a 21. Great. For history. Perfect. I rolled a 15 for investigation. I got a 12. Cool. <laughs> These are good for rolls. Book carrying. I will say... We'll start with the lowest number and then we'll go to the highest number. Sure. So for 12. I find a big book. You find a very big book. <laughs> it's a big one. It's got to have a lot of information. Yep. This book is uh, the history of the Forgotten Realms. Hey! And so it's massive. <laughs> you... And very contradictory. And does it have pictures? Have a lot of house sure. notes. Oh, lots right. of pictures. That aren't quite accurate. Uh, it's written in common. Oh. It has cool. lots of pictures. And, like you are, and you are able to cut to a relevant page. Um, with your axe, and <laughs> find information pertaining to uh, the Underdark. Great. Oh, I think he's going to pick uh, Doe Circles. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's also a good idea. You find that the Underdark <laughs> is Do I a... just make these things myself now, or what? There is a massive oh. underground continent on the regular material plane, not unlike the Golgari and Rakdos and Demir under city, but that spans an entire continent in this material plane, whatever that is. In there, these natural caverns, many of the um, beings that exist there are um, otherworldly and alien because they've never been exposed <coughs> to the surface. And so there are uh, mushroom people, and there are fish people, and there are a number of types of peoples and places and strange doings that exist, including, but not limited to, mind flayers. Uh -oh. Extremely powerful mind mages with octopus and squid-like faces that survive off of the intellect and minds of others, hence mind flaying. Yikes. They are controlled uh, often in hive-like um, hive -like livings by something called an elder brain. They also spawn off and spin off other beings that they create by accident. Um, when, for example, a larva of a mind flayer is put into the wrong type of being um, or the wrong mind is flayed, and one of the examples of which is if a mind flayer creates, by, either on purpose or by accident, um, an oblex, which is a special breed of ooze that they've created that is able to assault the minds of other creatures. You see that um, in the very recent past, the Underdark was uh, also invaded, much like uh, the Nine Hells were. The Underdark was invaded by the Abyss. And forces from the Abyss have been coming through and coming out of the Abyss into the Underdark. Um, maybe, well, you don't know the time or the year at present, but um, it's, it's written relatively in recent terms in this book, whatever that means. Um, you know that the Underdark is just another place. It's another continent, essentially, whatever a continent is in your thinking of how it works. Like a district. Like a district. On the way up. I tell you guys what I found. <clears throat> I have a couple of things. Um, 
and I will pitch one of them to you to mm -hmm. like expedite role play. Sure. Um, so I think because you said there was a big stack of books about like Zeriel and Avernus and stuff like yes. that. So I would say that I would definitely flip through a few of those, and I think the way we can handle that instead of you explaining like basic structure things is after game is over, like later this week, we'll tell talk. me a set number of pages in the Descent to Avernus Perfect. book that are like background <laughs> history pages that I can read out of character and Fabulous. catch up. I love it. What I'm investigating in character, two things, yeah. and I rolled, a I rolled a 15, so let me know how much this I can learn. Mm -hmm. I'm investigating causes of longevity of life. So Velma's trying to research why she's lived as long as she has, and she's trying to find any information she can on her own patron. Great. So perhaps she's reading through like a manual of monsters mm -hmm. or something along those lines to find any information she can about gender, about generous stray or sure. what she might be known by in other forms. Sure. Um, I will say that you do find essentially a warlock's handbook. Okay. Um, you find that many there are many types of warlock pact mm -hmm. agreements. Is this probably the first time I as a character know what the word warlock means? I feel Potentially, like, I feel yes. like in character, I always, in my, in my mind, I always feel like characters don't necessarily call themselves by what we call their Absolutely. classes. Absolutely. Like, like, Dumb this is go, the oh, first time. She knows she's a musician who does magic. Well, and warlock was just introduced to Magic the Gathering as a creature type. Right. So oh, interesting. It was, which is weird. Yeah. You so Velma just thinks of like, oh, this this being gave me power. That's all she knows of. Right. Yeah. I'm a cleric, and I do clerical work. So I yeah, mean, I think you would know. You would think you're something like a cleric. Of, yeah. Kind of. Yes. That's true. I would say that I've probably never you heard are the term able... fighter before. <laughs> <laughs> you are able to. I know see... a mafia boss who says otherwise. Yes. Yeah. You're able to research mm -hmm. um, what are referred to as otherworldly patrons. Okay. Um, that are able to bestow packed magic and are able to bestow um, eldritch invocations upon their chosen um, warlocks and their chosen peoples okay. that they wish to bring into the fold. They are offered, in so much as they are offered a deal of some kind, okay. not unlike a devil. Okay. In fact, many warlock patrons are devils. Okay. Um, you uh, know that there are many uh, warlocks who fall into the, quali to the quality of uh, fiend patronage. Mm -hmm. You find many warlocks who fall into um, other deep places okay. similar to the Underdark, for example, okay. or deep oceans, um, and you're able to find those kinds of, uh, of beings. Okay. You had a 20? No, I had a 15. You had a 15, okay. I will say that there is reference to a being known as the Generous Stray. Okay. Um, there is not much detail written about the Generous Stray. Um, okay. That's about all you find. Cool. But there is the, reference. Okay, so it does reference to, okay. Uh, is there anything that I can find that like might lead me to, like, now I know where else to look? Sure, yes. Okay. I would say that... Um, you, whenever you are able to look into warlock patronage, okay, you can try to dig deeper into who you may have made a uh, patron deal with. Deal okay. with. Now I understand my relationship with her a little better. Okay, right. cool. And then, is there anything that I find on the immortality? I don't want to hog too much screen time, but is there anything I can? It's good. I think that there's thing. a lot of things that can extend immortality, mm -hmm. not the least of which is warlock patronage. Okay. But I mean, I, I'm not looking for extending it. I'm trying to find out why I was long to begin with. I don't right. know why. Yes. Um, you do know that um, half-elf, half-elves tend to live a little bit longer than humans, but mm -hmm. you age much slower yeah. than other half-elves. Yeah, I feel like in my neighborhood there's probably a lot of half-elves because it's like, I mean, just kind of like... Comes to the territory, you know? So I feel like I noticed that I'm different than them. So I'm, I'm wondering if my other parentage is not human and if, like, what it might what might be causing a longer delay. Right. Your other parentage, were it elven, you would just be a full elf. Yeah. It is decidedly not human. Yeah. You can surmise that whatever the other parent is was a being that lives longer than an elf. Okay. It's a dwarf! <laughs> yeah, well, you don't know what a dwarf is. That's true. <laughs> um, but um, 
you... Actually, who lives longer in D&D? Is it in the 5e? Is it dwarves or elves? I can't remember. Probably, Not much. Probably elves. I think it might be elves, but... I forget. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, I can look matter. Matter. That's, that's, um, that's not important right now. It it's a big, could, full page. You, you sense that it could be something like a demon or a devil. Okay. Or another older being. Um, you also see that... A vampire. No! Could be a vampire. <laughs> uh, it could be a fey person. Um, okay. There are, there are a number of options. I think... I think and then maybe we can come back to this while we go to other players. Maybe like knowing that I look up known races that can reproduce with elves. Great. So I'll be doing that. I'll, should I roll again for that just to make sure? Just to be. Just Let's to be do that. There. Okay. It could well, also... that's a seven. So I don't find jack on that. You got you got what you found already. <laughs> okay, cool. You got you got a list that includes dwarf question mark. Yeah. Fey. Dwarf. Um, you know, you, dwarf? you know that you're supposed to look into other races similar to. Cool. Um, so you're going to look into elves, you're going to look into dwarves. You can look into a race called uh, a dragonborn. Okay. You can look into a race called a gnome. Okay. You can look into a race called a halfling. Okay. These are races you've never heard of before. Okay. Yeah. And a fae. Okay. A fae person. Okay. It's also not rule out that could be a corporation pulling those strings. True. <laughs> Just saying. All right. And now we have a 20 here, right? Uh, yes. So... Yes. I mean, I'm looking for how to get home. Right. I want to get us back to Ravnica. Well, and, and out of character, we also needed to find, like, what to do in El Terrell, right? Yes. Like, wasn't that part of what we were Correct. coming in here to do? Maybe we can say sure. that's what Tuturu also, was looking for. Sure. Can we just add, like, we can just say Tuturu came down and looked at stuff. We don't yep. have to have, like, that's have Velma brings her back. All of that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you uh, are looking for how to get home. Yes. It's primarily through a tree. Right. Through something called the World Pact, which is broken between the four of you. Right. You, with a 20, was it a natural 20? Uh, no. Or it was a dirty 20? Yeah. You're able to find reference in the book of uh, that has Yggdrasil in it. Okay. To something called the World Pact. Okay. You're able to uh, see that Yggdrasil itself is a sentient being, or was at one point, a sentient being, one sentient being, that spread seeds of itself throughout what is called the multiverse. You see reference to Yggdrasil as a planeswalker from long ago, from a time that is referred to in this book as Before the Mending. Okay. All right. And it spread its power and spread its spark in order to save other worlds and protect other worlds and broke itself apart across the multiverse on many worlds, including Ravnica, including the material plane, and including the Nine Hells. It says in this book that the seed that was once part of the Nine Hells, when this was paradise, was here once, but is no longer. There is no seed of Yggdrasil in the Nine Hells. There is. Many, there are many seeds of Yggdrasil in the Forgotten Realms and in the Material Plane, one of which is in the city of El Terrell. And it is called the Tree of Redemption. It's a massive oak at the center in a large um, cobblestone town square that is ancient beyond reckoning, and according to this, exists in El Terrell. Okay. You sense that with the power of Yggdrasil, some have become warlocks of, or priests of, or um, uh, clerics of Yggdrasil, the world tree, 
and that Yggdrasil has the power to transport through the planes and transport followers or um, uh, the, the, the people that are imbued with the power of the pact through the world ash to other locations imbued with that same power. Through the power of that planeswalker spark. Okay. Okay. All signs point to El Torero then. I think you mean El Torito. Right. Yes. El Torito. Either way, we just gotta find this city, look for a big tree there or something, and uh, go there. But what were you saying? You said there aren't any of the seeds of whatever it was in Avernus, but we're supposed to find Elturel here, aren't we? Elturel is a piece of this material plane that's been brought to Avernus, it seems, and because of that, that's our ticket out. This city is our only salvation at this point. It sounds like, regardless of what else we do, either go to El Torel or we need to find our way into this material plane, right. into these forgotten realms, and then that can lead us. We can go from here to there and then back to Ravnica. We may not be able to go back to Ravnica straight from here. Well, right. we saw what looked like El Torel from the top of the hive, so maybe we just got to make our way there and try and find this redemption tree you're talking about. I think you're right. Um, Asana, you're, you're, a smart, you're a smart Minotaur. You're welcome to come with us. No, we've never you, said that before. <laughs> if you'd like to well, leave. I'm saying it now. Well, thanks. And I mean Yeah, I would definitely like to leave, but it's like I guess given situation with Dewey, let's let's put some effort into, if we can, let's get him out of here. I don't like the idea of also being trapped. And I imagine he wouldn't, he and his ten other buddies wouldn't like it either. Right. Yeah, I guess I just talked here, but I, 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 I'll say I went out and told them to get chains and stuff together, and then came back down so sure, I could fine. Yeah, We've participate. Been for, I think we've been like four <laughs> hours We're good. researching. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so you are able to. Uh, I mean, you have a chain devil at your disposal. You have some chains. In addition, while you go back upstairs, you know that the eighth remnant, now that they have this location, and now that the hive has been destroyed, they are looking to turn this into sort of a base of operations for themselves. Um, their own version of Fort Knucklebone buried in the sand. Well, gents, looks like if we want, if you want to make this a uh, base, we're going to have to clear out the people who already live here, and not in a violent way. So, uh, with, so I have an idea that's kind of fun. Uh, uh, how, how attached are you to uh, all these bookshelves and stuff? I'm pretty attached to them. Yeah, well, uh, can we knock the books off and just use the shelves? Because I just I want to make sure if you're going to make this into a base of operations for your army, that you'll just preserve the books that are here because oh. they are very, very important. Absolutely, we can. I mean, we weren't planning on destroying any of the books, okay. the ones that weren't destroyed already by wasps. Right. Well, at least not directly. What I was thinking is, we could uh, make sort of a platform out of a couple of these bookshelves, put some uh, some of the chains on it, and just get one of the cars and have it go, and that'll lift it out. We we put the the big slimy guy on top of the bookshelf, and uh, boom, pulls him right out. Um, Astrock, if you could ask your comrades here to maybe grab a bookshelf for us to strap on the back of our vehicle, and maybe we could take some books with us. Oh, God, are we really going to put a book on the back of our car? Maybe just a few. Uh, like a <laughs> we have enough room in the vehicle to put some as well, I think. Ah, uh, this is what happens when you travel with a Demir and an Azorius. <laughs> I'm not convinced I don't want to stay, so don't, you know. <sighs> okay, take all me, right. Take me with you. Take some books. All right, boys. Think we can do that? Great. Absolutely. We're going to leave some of our, of course, we're going to maintain our end of the bargain. We are coming with you. If you want us to come with you, to, to make sure that nobody interrupts your travel on the way hey, to El Toro. No, you, you make a good point, though. You need a place to, to run things, because you got to be able to have a place to run drills, to, to have a base of operation, you know? That's right. Like, if, if you're just kind of wandering around, uh, nobody will know where to go if they need help. This is, so. our, this is our new home. I like it. What do you call your base of operations? 
uh, we call it, oh my god. Sun home. We call it sun home. I mean, we don't, we don't really have a sun. We could just call it. This could be the sun. Dark home. It could be a, it could be a, the sun is a glimmer of hope. It's, it's a beam of light on a new day. So what if you called this new sun home and it would stand as a symbol for this bat, this pact that you have made become the new Boros here on Avernus. Would that work for you? Sounds good. This is New Sun Home. The Fortress of the Eighth Legion. Slash Boros. Slash gonna, we, we, we might want to, you know, put some decorations up and stuff. We'll we got time for it. that. Yeah. But, okay, uh, but don't destroy this mosaic, because it's very gorgeous. No, I, I, it's, it's okay. a nice Oh, it seems good. All right, uh, of these three bookshelves, which one's the least important? I don't care about any of these. Well, well, you, Ask you guys. a bookish person. Hey, book people. Well, I just like diligently start moving books away. Yeah, so let's just destroyed. move the books. I help you start right. moving the books. Yeah. And I'll right, say that you are able you. to <laughs> load I don't want these a number of books. <laughs> okay. And um, including all the books Tutoru wanted. Perfect. Correct. <laughs> all the books Tutoru wanted. Books that you think you may like to look at in the future, including mm-hmm. the books that you looked at here. Okay. And in the future, if you think to yourself, hmm, I wish I had a book on X subject, mm. what will happen is I will make you roll <laughs> oh, a history check to it. see if you have said book in your trunk library. Okay, not too it's, it's a, me, it's a it's scholastic totally. book fair. And if we <laughs> don't, the Eighth Legion has a book it's delivery true. service now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bookmobile. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Books on wheels. That is, a, that is a lovely setup, and I, I really like all of that. Is there anything you want to make sure that you do say, take, from this library before we get on the road elsewhere. I think I would have taken that uh, that Avernus book, which is why I'll be able to study it in the off time. Perfect. Yeah, as soon as some of the books are off the shelf, he's like, all right, let's do it, and takes the ax and just starts like <laughs> chopping out some of the shelves you and can't. stuff. Oh, you're right. <laughs> so I take my hammer and I start <laughs> some of the shelves. The, the, axe, the shelves together. The axe can't deal damage to wood. No, it can't. <laughs> Not to plants. I like you trying to do it and it like stopping in midair. Mm-hmm. He, he tries and it just like, and hits yep. it, oh, oh, man. It all reverberates right back into <laughs> Astrock, and like a cartoon, he hits it, and it's like, <laughs> What do you want to take? Do you want to do anything here? Um, I take a few of the books that deal with Ravnica, because I'm curious about Grandpa, okay. and what he's trying to hide. Sure. And, well, I guess I'm going to El Torito, because I need to talk to Grandpa. Yeah. I go over to the bookshelf, from Ravnica, mm-hmm. and I find a book called The Advocates and the Urchin. Sure do. And I hand it to you. And this will be a very good one for you to read about. Okay, what's this about? Uh, the history of Ravnica. Okay. How the government we have now was founded. All right. Then I learned about Rakdos. And I look at the edition <laughs> to see how early edition it is. Second. Oh, interesting. Second edition. I, 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 po- I, I write the poem in the back of the book just nice. to give it to him so he has it. I, I, I go over and I kind of put a hand on his shoulder and I, I kind of go in and I go, hey, I, I don't want to be a buzzkill, but we have talked, we've I looked at that book before. There are no pictures. <laughs> Text is very small, much less entertaining than Velma leads people to believe. <laughs> <laughs> how about this? If I read this enough, we will make a play so that you can understand it. Now that I like. <laughs> I like that. Perfect. That's right. He's a very good angel. <laughs> You're able to rig up like reveal, your so Oblex chain net and be able to pull Dewey up with you. You're able to clear a hole enough that Dewey is able to sit up on the surface. He uh, is really trans- into flames and dies. <laughs> right. Oh, he's, yeah. He's translucent. It is translucent in the uh, in the midday, midnight, twilight, early morning light of Avernus, reddish and um, strange shadows within. Um, on occasion, you can see that of a hell wasp sort of take shape inside and then fade away. Another one is a human and fades. Uh, various. Uh, humanoids of various kinds take shape and then dissipate inside of Dewey. Um, Dewey looks at your tormentor and says, that's not, that's not going to be big enough for me. Yeah. When we offered to pop you in the back of the car, we thought you were one guy, not ten guys and a giant blob. Princeps Kovic will say, um, well, we're parking... We, we were going to leave one of the demon grinders here. Um, if you want to take a demon grinder, you can take one. And Dewey will say, how many people does it fit? 
And Princess Kovic says, uh, well, we usually man it with eight. And Dewey says, well, I'm ten people. <laughs> so he will man the driver's seat <laughs> and the harpoon flingers <laughs> and various bookish librarians take various stations around the demon grinder. Love it. Well, it's a good trade-off, a, a vehicle for a base. Dewey, you're my favorite right now. <laughs> hey, think about it this way. You, you got two spare crew members. That's good. You got passengers. Um, you may, uh, you don't have to leave right now. You may choose to stay here if you wish. Um, I, I think I'm not going to, because I think, I think in the moment it made sense that she would stay as like a sacrifice to save everybody else. But I think No, that, I mean, I, what I'm oh. sorry, I, I apologize. What I meant is, you may take a long rest at this location. Yeah, I think I probably would. Yeah, we, we got mean, a new we, base, it takes some time to set up. We, yeah. We, 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 we've had a long day of, fall, of fighting wasps and making that, yeah. A safe haven would be nice. A yeah. Astarok will help the, the, the eighth uh, go down and kind of set up some stuff there. Great. You know? I will make Hell Wasp barbecue for everybody. Perfect. Okay. Um, okay. And then, like, when he's not looking, she pulls food out of her, out of <laughs> <Yeah>. her, uh, <laughs> that she got yesterday and, like, hands them to you guys. And just because, like, just as, like, Lulu, during this time, will float over to you, Lucian, and say, have you, have you looked at what you, at, in the thing? Oh, yes, the contract. Uh, I have. Uh, it's quite well written. Um, I'm uh, supposed to be finding this uh, person of interest. And they have, go by quite a few names. The Grey Woman L. Agent H526 of Sneak. Cordelia Ven... There's uh, quite a few. They're most commonly known by the name The Wanderer. I'm not sure why that name is more important than the others, but that's what I'm looking for. Any uh, any blips in your memory about that? I don't recognize any of those names, no. Maybe while I'm here in this library I could look for some information about this, but it might just be a wild goose chase to keep me here in hell forever. Well, I hope that... that I, I mean, I know where I need to go, and you know where you need to go, right? And we need to go to the same place, so that's good. Right. Exactly. How are you feeling? Good. I'm good. When we get there, and you have to go, I and I have to go, we have to go different places. Um... Yes, I suppose we do. But we'll deal with that when it comes. No need to dwell on it now, if that's what you're thinking about. I just I just don't want to say goodbye to my friends, you know? I had to do that before, and I don't like that. Well, when you have good friends, they're never truly gone. They're always with you. And we always will, we always will be with you. Good. I'm glad. And she'll like lean up against you. I have a scene I want to roleplay before we wrap up. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to approach Lucian while we're resting. And I want to have it. So, <clears throat> Lucian, I, I have a confession to make to you. Ah, uh, yes. Um, is there something I should be worried about? Um, it's more something I'm worried about. Um, last night, when you were asleep at the hotel, resting from your wounds from the battle. I did attempt to open the envelope containing your deal. I was not able to. Um, it was sealed, and I, I that was a line too far for me. If it had been unsealed, I hate to tell you, I would have opened it and I would have read it. And I'm, I'm sorry for that, but I have to admit to you that I am having some trust issues with you at the moment. And that's why I'm confessing this to you now, because I'd rather speak to you honestly about it than sneak around behind your back. I, I caught the old Velma last night, and I don't want to go down that road again. Uh, I, I, I didn't mean to keep anything hidden from you. If you had just asked me, I would have shown you that. And of course you would, and that's why I, I'm mad at myself for going down that road again. But here's, 
Here's my concern. You see, I met the same devil that you did. Ah, Tybalt. Yes, and when he offered me a deal, I immediately refused him. But you didn't, and that concerns me. And then uh, Astarok also just made a deal with a group of devils, and they seem all right for a group of, of evil warriors, but they're still evil warriors, and you I'm sure Tybalt is evil as well, and I don't... I, I have come from a place where I have spent my life making acquiescences to evil people as a means to an end, and I saw where it got me. And the, knowing... I don't know how long you spoke to him in your perspective and how long it was. It was only a few mo a moments for us, but... I am worried about what's happening to this party right now. I hear your concerns, and I do thank you for coming to me. I had not thought of it altogether like that. I, uh, I made that decision, uh, not consulting anyone, because I could not at the moment. And I made it, um, possibly in haste, thinking I could get the better of a devil. And may, that might be foolish, but... I didn't think I had a choice at that point. I well, didn't want to be... I didn't want to be... stuck in this godforsaken hellscape. Having us all trapped here. I understand that. Um, I'll, I will say this. You are a man who understands contracts, and I respect you for that. I am a woman who understands the negative side of contracts. If there's one thing I picked up in my time working as a, as a, essentially a fixer for the Azorius, I know how people like Tybalt swindle the innocent with documents. So once you've studied that and you understand as much of it as you can, if you are willing to trust me, I would like to peruse it myself and look for any loopholes or anything that will allow me to help you break your contract. I want to, I want you to trust me as much as I want to trust you. And I've always trusted you as a man of your word and of honesty. And so this is what I'm good at. And I would like to use that power to help you. And I will not turn down that help. I, I don't, uh, I, as contracts go, I am very good at them. And you've only known me for what, a year, two That's years? True. Not long. But when I was younger, <laughs> when I was younger, they used to call me the devil of New Prov. Nice. I find that very hard to believe, but I'm also not surprised by a lot these days. I'll have to talk about that sometime. And... Let's hope not. Can I request a scene? Yes. <clears throat> I'll give this to you for now so you can study it out of character and then I'll look if you can go into the same I'll post it. it I can post it to the group if cool. you <laughs> like if it is possible I would like to overhear this scene how do you feel about that um that's up to you because I, I didn't even know it was going to happen yeah I, was um, I think that I will let you do that without a, without a role because I think that Velma was so focused <laughs> on, mm. on her I think she was being more vulnerable than she normally is by opening up to Lucian like that mm -hmm. so I, I will say that it's a mo Let's roll it off because I do have a familiar that would maybe have noticed if you're listening in. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a perception check. Yep. You will beat me unless I, you... I will. Here's what here's what I'm gonna say though. Mm -hmm. You listen in, mm -hmm. and you still happen to notice that a black cat is watching you the whole time you're listening mm -hmm. in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you hear everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Velma, can I? talk to you for a moment. I overheard... I'm not gonna lie. I overheard this conversation. I'm and, aware. Yeah. Just point out... Just wanted to point out something. A lot of the devils that I deal with down in Avernus, they don't give you something that you don't already want. Oh, I am, I am aware of how temptation is. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So, here's the thing. If this Tybalt character is trying to swindle you, it's because he's obviously trying to get something that he wants, mm -hmm. and you're trying to get something that you want. You know, a lot of that isn't really an evil thing. It's just a person or humanoid thing 
that I see in a lot of people. I mean, sure. like, hopefully you are getting something that you want. I mean, this thing looks valuable to you. It was his life, as far as I'm aware. I made this deal on death's door. Then, obviously, it was worth it. Because you're still alive, and you can still pursue this. Whatever this is, is very important. Sure. And I, I appreciate those concerns, and I think there is valid and merit to them. Uh, or the the viewpoint, I should say. I will say that I I am very aware of, of the way that people sign a contract in a moment of need, and I'm aware of how those contracts can be manipulated and used, and so I just want to be looking out for our friend, that's all. That makes sense. And if we... If we need a couple more Avernus advocate types, I know a few. Some of them my grandfather knows too. I look forward to speaking with your grandfather. I'd like to hear more about his tra travels from Rakdos, from Ravnica to here, and how he's made do. Well, hopefully he can help. I'll be good. How are you chatty types doing over here? We could. <clears throat> Very well, actually. This is quite an operation you have going, Master Rock. Yeah, well, you know, you, you can't really be a legion unless you, like, set up some quarters and, and you gotta have some training fields, things like that. Also, you know, we, we had a couple of the bookshelves didn't seem to have too many books on them, and that, it just didn't feel like Sun Home if there weren't a couple pillars and things like that, so we, we worked some of that, and, you know, you, you kind of had to get it how it had to get. Can I just say that uh, seeing you direct others around and establish this sort of base it uh it's inspiring well th thank you very much you know i am a wojack i've got a letter that proves it i know and that, uh, that, that comes with a uh, with a couple uh with a couple of responsibilities now you know? I, i've seen this letter many times but there is someone here who hasn't seen it yet oh yeah hey hey you guys so uh, check this out and i I just, I have a letter that I give to everybody mm. just to show that I've got things. Well, come so, on, don't hey. be shy, pass it here. All right, check this out. It says the Boros Legion is got, it's signed by Aurelia herself, the war leader. And he just goes on for a little while talking about the letter and explaining how he's figured out what all the words mean on the, uh, mm. <laughs> on the thing by now. And there are a couple of pretty complicated words. Mm. On the that. font you know, is very big, so this must be important. That's how you can tell. Yes, big fonts. <laughs> they said I could get it framed, but how are you supposed to carry it around if you get it framed, right? You know, Astarok, I believe that when we get back to Ravnica and the tales of your travels have hit the streets, I think you may end up being Brigadier. Yeah, well, I guess we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Vasion, roll a history check for me. Sure. Eight. Okay. Mm Astarok folds it back up and puts it into <laughs> one of his pockets. It, it has been worn as hell <laughs> now. Like, it, it's from almost hell. hard to read some <clears throat> of the parts. Right. But Astarok knows what it says. It's probably like weather <laughs> from sand a little bit, too, and like. Yeah. Blood. Yeah, um, blood. Definitely yeah. has some blood on it. Oh, yeah. It's definitely hard to read parts of it because there's like blood. Don't you worry about it. sweat making that all runny? Like, there are ways to protect that, you know? Yeah. It's like when mm -hmm. we write plays, like, you want to protect the sheep. So, like, with, with vellum and, and other things oh, that will last longer. Don't mention the vellum to them. That's 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 a bad ship to sail. Wait, uh, what? I don't know. It looks fine to me. Just not a fan of uh, skin based paper. I mean, it's a letter. You're supposed to read it, right? Like, <laughs> what do you do with a letter if you're not reading it all the time? I read this letter all the time. <laughs> and I bet you're good at that, too. Yeah, I think I am. <laughs> you know, Astarok, I know you appreciate that letter and you like to share it, but there are books on the history of Ravnica here in this library, and uh, maybe you should put your letter in one of those books and let it stand as a symbol for the hero of, of Ravnica named Astarok. But then I wouldn't be able to show it to people. <laughs> I guess you I have a good point. <laughs> <laughs> You're misunderstanding the purpose of the letter. <laughs> I thought you'd want to be recorded in Ravnica history, but apparently, oh, I understand. Fine. I don't know. Other people could write stuff down. I like to carry my history with me. <laughs> well, if you get an office here, you could hang it up there. Sure. Sure. 
Or like make a copy of it and hang a copy of it up there so I can carry the other you one around copies, with me. Yes. Because I mean, what if I'm not in my office and I need to tell somebody I'm a Wojek? Also true. You at <laughs> least thought about making a copy. Exactly. And Astro goes back off to help. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Um, you're welcome to keep having scenes if you'd like. Um, I'm I am loving watching this. No, I think we're pretty good. Um, we're past we're past time. It's Close fine. <laughs> as as we uh, head to bed for the evening, uh, you all level up. Woo! Woo! Ooh. Except for two true. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Everyone, everyone will be level seven Ooh. when they wake up next episode. Cool. Um, and so decide uh, what that means for you all. But I want to set up what is going to be happening next time because you all can get on the road. And I want to be able to jump right into the action next time. Next time on the Broken Pact. So, <laughs> you all hop into your uh, cars. The the members of the Eighth Remnant that are coming with you are in tow. You have your uh, your cadre, and you can tell me how the cars are lined up in your group. You have Dewey and Dewey and Dewey, all in the Demon Grinder. Uh, you have the uh, the Morrow, the Tormentor. Uh, and you also are um, uh, any any members of the Eighth Remnant that come along with you. Probably a pair of Devil's Rides, maybe another Demon Grinder. Yes. I'm gonna rename Dewey's Demon Grinder to the Dewey Decimator System. Oh, I love it. I love <laughs> it. Oh, yes. So great. Dewey Decimator. So great. So good. That's so good. It's very good. So good. I wow. Wish, I wish I could give you inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That was good. I mean, you already have one, but still. I love it. You begin driving, and. Uh, you begin rolling, and you're on the road, and you have all of your new compatriots with you. Um, and as you're driving, you're driving through plateaus and mesas of various kinds, and at some point, a large projectile appears. Hey look, it's a small projectile. <laughs> oh wait, it's getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and explodes in front of the front cars. As it explodes and expands, spirits out of it appear. Ooh. And as the cars drive through these spirits, they get opportunity attacks against you as they drive through. Ooh, I like that. So we'll start the next episode with that. But in addition, Leaping off of ramps from behind mesas are a pair of devil's rides. Ooh. And another large demon grinder appears behind. The devil's rides are being ridden by what appear to be ghasts or ghouls or some other undead force. And the demon grinder being driven by a necromancer who you can only assume is oh. the one that you wronged Crap. a few days ago. Feanor, who leads the undead gang here in Avernus, do you have anything you want to say or do right now to make sure that we start with next episode? I'm going to cast Heat Metal on Feanor's car. Perfect. <laughs> and I, I just turn and say, Well, boys, looks like this isn't going to be a boring ride after all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm going to try to Since you won't be here next week, I cast Fireball. <laughs> Fireball oh. at at Feanor's ride. Yep, perfect. Uh, dope. Heat metal. Fireball. I was gonna get a race. I cast drive car, and you cast <laughs> drive car. Step on it, and we'll begin there next week with some more car combat. But for now, that's gonna end this week's episode. Yay! Yay! Woo! Woo! That was fun. That was yeah. that was a great episode. I hope that uh, I hope that that was that was fun for everybody. Live reading, 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 reading is fun. Demental. That's true. We <laughs> love books. We love books. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Yay. Ryan Omega, everybody. 
Thank you um, for having me. This was so much fun. You were great. Fun. I mean, that play, play was <laughs> amazing. I, mean, I had no idea. Yeah, that was I great. did not hate making, <laughs> making Lucian wear the, yeah. the unicorn thing was inspired. It was so good. <laughs> and I loved, I loved how you played it off. It was so I great. Had to, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the fourth wall breaking, oh. like, like Deadpool tiefling is so yeah. good. That's right. why I made the like in character choice. Of it. Something's lost in a translation from infernal to common. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. My lovely players this evening uh, are going to tell you where they uh, you can find them. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen. You can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. Uh, that's mostly it. You can also find me, uh, well, actually not right now because we are between seasons on Wild Cards, our uh, Savage World show on twitch.tv slash saving throw show, but it's a great time to catch up on the other shows, and in a uh, couple weeks, we'll be in Tombstone for mm -hmm. a thing there, which will be really fun with uh, with the Doomtown, which is a, uh, a card game based around the Deadlands setting. We're gonna be doing some stuff for there, and we might end up putting some of that. So yeah, just follow our social media to see more about what's going on there, and that'll be fun. Hey y'all, you can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman or Instagram at Riley Silverman. And there are only two episodes left in my right. Rat Queens uh, role-playing game for Hyper RPG. Uh, if actually, if you go onto my YouTube page, I've actually compiled a playlist of our entire uh, run of, of games. So you can start from the very beginning and go through it, including all of our one-offs and our live show at, uh, at uh, Gen Con. So check that out. But yeah, two Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. on, on twitch.tv slash Hyper RPG. Uh, we're we're almost done. I'm really sad. I love that show. Hey everybody, I'm Grob Glad. You can follow me on all the socials at double GXG. That's the word double, then GXG. That's it for me. Hi, I'm Ryan Omega. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook under Ryan Omega, on Twitter under Ryan OMGA. You could find uh, my show Blank Slate, which is an original black box LARP, which happens to have a certain person playing in it. <gasps> um, um, you could check that on the VOD under um, twitch.tv slash scappy rooster where you can see some of our past episodes and in a few weeks we'll start season four blank slate state of the union where you as chat can actually be parliament representatives passing Ooh. rules and laws that will affect the entire empire including certain empires that want to declare independence are you going to allow them to secede and allow the empire to fall Ooh, cool. neat. i Love Blank Slate. <laughs> and part of the reason why I was just like, Ryan, you know what? Just go. I just don't even want to know. <laughs> I want you to be like 30% of the DM. Just go. Just do something. <laughs> <clears throat> and that was spectacular. I'm so pleased that you could be on this show with us. And um, and I'm, I'm glad that you're part of the family. Yeah. And I love yeah. that you made fan art for your own character. Yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> Not just fan art. Official art. Yeah. 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 It was a fa spectacular. So please do give Ryan a follow. Yeah. Hi, I guess it would be official art if you are the person playing it. Yeah. <laughs> still, I... I, I yeah. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Holy cow. I would Aww. I would love to have you if you were available on any of my Blink Slate. Absolutely. Yeah. Like if you're I'll hook you all up. This yes. Is yes. We will talk. Yes. yes, we will talk. We'll talk. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll talk. Thank you. Um, Hi, everybody. My name's Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y, Mox Ruby, on the internet. You can catch me on Magic Mics with Aaron Campbell and uh, Evan Irwin, uh, which is a weekly news talk show about Magic the Gathering. And that's about it for me. Um, I have a couple folks to thank, uh, not the least of whom is Benevolent Overlord, Dom Zook. Yeah! Woo! Um, who, without whom this project would never get on the air because he he's on the ones and twos over there uh, at the editing station. Uh, special thanks to Harold for uh, snoring through this episode. Snoring it um, yeah. Yeah. Studio dog. Um, <laughs> and of course, thanks to uh, Zach, he Zach Heidi again, um, to Garav for that beautiful intro that we have, Phil DeLuca, Emmett Fury, John Wells, the story team, without whom I would be totally lost, uh, Jarena Linnea for the character art, um, all of our sponsors, CoolStuffInc.com, Norse Foundry, Elderwood Academy, and our new sponsor, Hero Forge, yeah. um, for all of their help. And of course, thank you to Dungeons and & Dragons and Wizards of the Coast and Saving Throw Show. This here at Saving Throw Show is a independent uh, RPG channel. Please do check them out at SavingThrowShow.com and check out all of their lovely, wonderful programming, including but not limited to The Broken Pact. Next week, 
we are going to have, uh, well, we're going to have some some Mad Max action, I think. Yeah. And we'll yeah. see if the morrow... I've, I've been re-watching all the Mad Max movies just because of this Ooh. show. They're <laughs> on Amazon Prime right now, so I'm very excited. <gasps> we're on the road again next week nice. is what that really is. <laughs> and I'm very excited. Well, I threw a spirit bomb at you already. But uh, it seems like you'll be able to uh, to respond Goku. in kind. <laughs> but until then, everybody, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week on The Broken Pact. Good night.